Hello there, everybody. How are you all doing today? It's time to explore the show floor for E3 2011. There's actually a lot here, which I wasn't expecting, right? Stumbled upon quite a bit. Megan is here as well. <laughs> yeah. She's not saying... I didn't even see how many tabs you had open until now, actually. <laughs> right? And, and the silent, it completely stunned to silence. They're all fairly short, bit. though, which is the thing. A couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. You know, fairly yeah. short compared to some of the other ones we've seen. Um, and some of them are from GameSpot itself. I thought those would be the only ones we had. Then I checked it out on YouTube, and it's like, oh, wow, it's actually a lot. To the point where I, I even trimmed it down a bit. Cause I was like, Ooh. cause I was like, you know, it, it, it'll be redundant after a bit where it's like, yo, I'm going through show floor. And you know, it, so I had to trim it down a smidge. Uh, just so it doesn't go on for too long and blah, blah, blah. You know how it'd be. All right. So first one that we're going to be going through is uh walk through first day. Uh, from a channel called MMO HD TV. I assume they probably cover MMOs. Probably. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they do day two or three. I didn't see any pop up in my search. And I didn't see any on their YouTube channel. So, you know, I am not too sure. But anyway, let us begin. Do, 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 do. Classic YouTube right here. Started with some bopping tunes. Yeah. On look, the floaty text. Tanks. World of Tanks. I wonder if that is World of Tanks, actually. It looked like it said World of Tanks on the side. Hold on, let me see. As the uh, old World of Tanks, it is. Oh, so this would have been during the beta, I believe. Or the alpha, Probably. maybe, for World of Tanks? Because World of Tanks, so I actually used to play a lot of World of Tanks. In fact, they even got one of my friends, Joe, who I've spoken of before on this channel. Uh, very into World of Tanks, because I played the game uh, during the alpha stage or was it the beta stage maybe it was the beta stage before like the full release and i was like you know joe the game and this is like after the game release i still played it for a bit i think maybe maybe it was like a month or two into the full game i was like you know joe there's this game called world of tanks that i play because we played tf2 a lot and we were like trying to expand into like other games as like a group back then so yeah. we we're like I was like, oh, Joe, you know, I, I play this game called World of Tanks. You want to give it a shot? And he's like, well. I, but, but then I found out, like, he's actually very into, like, like World War II stuff, tanks in particular. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll play it. And then we played it, and he got hooked to the point where he... Then Megan's not going to be surprised, because she knows Joe's personality quite a bit now. Dude got yeah. hooked, and dude played, like, constantly near nonstop. And he grinded out, like, to max tank rank. And it was like, man... It was crazy. A good game. Well, it was back then. It was fun. Nowadays, I mostly play War Thunder if I'm going to play a game like this. But... Yeah. Yeah, so I, that just takes me back, man. First day. Ah, nice. Star Wars rep. Those are pretty good. Old Republic. Oh, the Old Republic. Yeah, we spoke about this during the conference. One of them, I think. We did. I, Xbox probably. 2K12 for WWE. See aliens, colonial marines there. Ah, uh, there's our boy. Gears. What? Oh, I yeah, just Gears. Said Gears. Gears. I thought you said Pierce. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the name of the main character. It's Marcus Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, this one is the. Uh, which one's this? This isn't that zombie game, is it? No, it's not. I don't it's know. Yeah, I don't know what this one is. If I Google image search it, I... Oh, here you go. Renegade, Renegade Ops. Ops. Hmm. Oh, it's the Xbox Live arcade thing. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw yeah, PS3 there. So it's just general... And Steam. So I guess it's just generally... You know. The yeah. arcade... An arcade game. Need for speed the round, the one that did poorly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what I said in my in my Wikipedia search. I think so.
Terra. Oh, Terra. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> I didn't play a lot of Terra, but I knew some people that were really into Terra. I forget, is Terra the MMO or is that something else? Yeah, Terra was an MMO. Ah, uh, yeah, so I, I played this one for like a day. <laughs> yeah. And I had a couple friends that played it for maybe like a week. Joe being one of them, funnily enough, he was really obsessed with trying to get us all to just play various games. He would see like an MMO and he'd be like, oh guys, we should try this. They were never any good. I never, I, I didn't care for Terra online or Terra. <laughs> Not my kind of MMO. Just couldn't get into it. Yeah, it. I just remember it feeling really weird in terms of like MMOs that I played. I I can't put my finger on why. It just didn't really feel that good to me. I do like how much the Ubisoft girl is rocking it, dude. Like she's into that. Yeah, I know. That must be like tiring, man. Oh, for sure. Oh, did you Modern Warfare Three? Modern Warfare Three. A lot of people on the show floor. It's jam packed. Yeah. Oh, that's Vindictus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I guess it is, huh? And they're on the boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, for anyone that doesn't know, Vindictus is kind of like. Uh, I would classify it as like an arena dueler game. You kind of go into like different quarters and levels and fight different enemies and different characters. But like the big thing about it is like while you're waiting for your party to ready up, you're on the boat and you can like break stuff on the boat. And like there's, I think there's like a target thing you can hit that makes noises. So it's just like, I spent a lot of time on the boat. And like it's a pretty hmm. okay game for a free to play game. I, was gonna, I mean, that's pretty good. Like, yeah, because I don't know much about it, to be honest, other than, like, I think the little bits you've told me. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's, like, an amazing game, but it was one I came back to every now and then, because it was pretty fun. This is very interesting, by the way, just, like, a projector with the game on it. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little weird, to be honest. Maybe they didn't bit. have enough screens. Maybe. Like, it's unique. It's a unique experience. That's I don't true. Know I don't know if it would give you the kind of, you know, the kind of feeling that you'd want your player to have, but interesting. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I guess that's pretty cool. So the other one that I have is this one here. This one's a little bit longer, probably one of the longer videos I have, actually. Mm, um, okay. Uh, just the show floor walkthrough. This one is from, uh, let's see, how do you say that? Nanonarcagent? Nanonarcagent, okay. All right, pretty cool. I pretty guess cool. I'm taking a guess. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, it probably is. So thank you to Nano Narcade, Nano Nano Narcade. And if um, you're watching this later, and you found we mispronounced your name, then we're both sorry. And uh, yeah, even if it's five years in the future or something, I will put up a thing saying like, "Yo, <laughs> I, did, I, I pronounced his name wrong. <laughs> Here's what it was supposed to be." <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> So now I kind of hope he finds this like five years in the future because that'd be really <laughs> funny. You'd be like, what is that from? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, right? Like, wait a minute. A oh, Harvest Moon. Oh, Harvest Moon, that? Tale of Two Towns. Tale of Two Towns. I don't recall that one. That one came out on the DS and the 3DS, I think. It, you kind of had, that was the one Harvest Moon I actually played. But you kind of had the choice between, like, breeding animals or growing crops on a farm. Okay. I think you could eventually get into both, but you kind of just picked which one you started with. Okay. Also, I just figure if it's going to be that, that same kind of jingle in the background, I may as well just mute it. Yeah. Because uh, I could see that song, that music choice being a little annoying after a while. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of repetitive. Like, do 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 like do 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 yeah. Like, I get it. I get it. If for the time, right? Like that's what was on YouTube, to be fair. But I, I just feel like nowadays that, that would annoy a lot of people. Go like, yeah. yeah, very repetitive in the ears. I mean, I'll check back every now and again just to see if like there is sound. But we don't really yeah. need it for a show floor video, to be honest. Um, I mean, no. 
if they're looking at games particularly, then maybe we'll see. But yeah, yeah. So we got some Sonic, some Forza. Um, oh, I see they got the the racing seats kind of set up for Forza. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Hey, which Sonic is that? Sonic. It's one on uh, DS. Oh, I'm seeing a few Sonics actually. I guess they're just showing off like a yeah. bunch. There was oh, a boy. few like on DS as well. I, I don't guess know it's just like one Sonic that one in general. Specifically. Sonic Rush? Probably. Then we have this one right here. Sonic the infamous like... bad boy. <laughs> Secret, Secret rings. Yeah, so that's just like a bunch of Sonic games in general. Oh, Sonic, Sonic of the Olympic, Olympic, Olympic Games. Mm hmm. 2012 London. Ooh. And then you have uh, Alien Colonial Marines. That's, That's neat. really cool. That's really cool. Very nice 3D effect. Yeah. WWE, no wrestling ring. I have UFC right beside it, too. Very funny. Lord of the Rings War in the North, huh? <laughs> was this the was this one of the um RTS games? Uh, I think it was a little more like a hack and slash game. I played very little of it when I tried to play co-op with my brother years ago. It's kind of been one of those games that I'm like, yeah, I'll eventually come back to it. And I mean, I guess we could maybe play it co-op. I'm not entirely sure how that works because I have it on Steam. Mm, okay. Never end. Never heard of that one. Well, you know, when we find a game that we've never heard of, it's time to go to Wikipedia. <laughs> so it's called it's called Never End. Huh? Never End Game. Was Never End was was Never an End like together? Uh, it was like yeah. Uh, never. No, I don't know. Never dead. <laughs> never dead. Oh, what maybe it's, it's Never Dead. Never Dead video game. Uh, Third-person shooter hack and slash video game developed by Rebellion Developments, published by Konami. Received mixed reviews from critics. Hmm. Shane, okay. this is an immortal and is able to survive severe injuries. Every time the player loses body parts and will have to collect the removed limbs by rolling into them. Okay. Sounds quirky. <laughs> but it does, sure. yeah. I can, I can, like, even just reading that, though, I can see why it was probably mixed, right? Mixed reception. Yeah. Seems almost a little too out there. I don't know what these are. I, I don't Not know what sure. this is related to. I don't, it doesn't seem like it's from a game I recognize. I would think something Terminator-y, but they don't look Terminator enough. I'm not too sure, because isn't this around the corner from, like, the Aliens booth? So is this, like, the other side of it? I mean, maybe. Duke Nukem. Uh, this would have been, that. like... I... <laughs> yeah, I can't read that either. Like, it would have been what Duke Nukem Forever became, I'm guessing. Yeah, I can't read that. Which, yeah, I, I still <laughs> got day one. Never played it, but I got it day one because I wanted to say I got Duke Nukem forever day one, regardless of whether it was good or bad. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I have never played Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem 3D, really good. That's a really good one. Hmm. Uh, well, that's cute. I don't know, that is Jollywood? Never heard of Jollywood. Konami, huh? Um, I guess it's a Disney game. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Darkness. Darkness Two. Interesting. I played some I, Darkness I, One. I, <laughs> I played Darkness One, and I enjoyed it. I played some Darkness too, but I didn't get too far in it. I always forget that game exists. Same, same. And I remember being pretty big when the first one came out. Yo, XCOM. Yeah. But uh, which XCOM is this? this I think doesn't... it's like the first remake. Because I saw the poster outside as we came in. It was like the blue font. 
Okay, so this one probably is the first remake, which is a really good game, by the way. I really, really, really like the original XCOM. I still play it every now and again, just like when I feel like it. Uh, love XCOM 2 more, though. I'm going to be real. I do like the, the sequel a lot more. And I love the first one, so, you know. Trying to get Megan to play yeah. the sequel. Yeah, eventually I will play it. I enjoyed the first one. My boy Akeda was like my hero, man. Yeah. He, he he was like my worst soldier, and then he ended up saving humanity. It was great. What's well, always funny with that one is like, he was like a sniper, and you were like, I'm not going to lie, you were like really bad at using him. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was like, yeah, and I didn't want a backseat game, but I'm watching you struggle, and you're like, man, I hate this. I, I hate this like class. I'm like, okay, Megan, here's what you do. I got the Duke Nukem Forever chair. That's fun. And yeah. I'm like, Megan, here, here's what you do. You take the sniper... And you put him on a roof. You move him occasionally, but otherwise you leave him there. And you're like, okay. And then you did, and he became your favorite soldier. And he took him on, like, every mission. And he became, like, your dude. And I was like, you know. Well. Really funny how that worked out. (laughs) To be fair, he leveled up a bit. Because initially when I tried that, he was still really low level. And I'm like, damn, he's missing, like, every shot. And then I got... I can't remember which upgrade. It was some upgrade that just made him, like, really good. He was, like, one-shotting everything. And then, like, at the final mission of the game, he just, like, was very monumental to, like, literally winning the game. And he sacrificed himself. And it's just like, oh, man. The the whole story of XCOM, it's not about humanity. It's about Akeda. Yeah, (laughs) right. Which is what's fun about XCOM. You get really attached to your little soldiers, you know. Yeah, I got really really attached to them. And that I think was kind of the hard thing, actually, when I mm-hmm. started playing 2. I'm just like, I don't have my soldiers anymore. Yeah, right? Which is kind of why I think it was good that you took you know, a bit of a break so you can kind of disconnect yourself from the first game <laughs> and get used to having just, like, new dudes, right? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. No, I think I think the part you're thinking of, too, is you unlock the scope. Because the scope gave me yeah. really good aim. 20-plus aim or something like that. Something like that, or like getting extra damage for headshots. It was something. It was something. It was good though. People should yeah. play XCOM and XCOM too. Really, really fun games. Yes, both very fun games. Ah, uh, it's that uh, Once Upon a Monster. Huh. Which was the one that we saw at the Microsoft conference, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see, still playing the music? Yeah, it is. Imagine hearing that for like 14 minutes. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude. But like, people can't listen to that the whole time. (laughs) I feel bad, because like, I I know this video came out like years ago, right? And that was just the thing that people did at the time. You had had like a a tune to the music, but... Or a tune to the video, but... Nowadays, it's just too grating on the ears. And I'd much rather hear the hustle and bustle of, like, the show floor than just the piano tune, repetitive piano tune. Ah, yeah. Sonic Adventure. I I do still like Sonic Adventure. You know, it might not be super great. But it's fun. (laughs) It's fun. Sonic Adventure, Sonic fun. Adventure 2. Cheesy as hell as well, but yeah. Sims, Sims 3. 3 pets. I do like Sims 3. Uh, one of my favorite Sims games, I do like what I've played of Sims 4, but... Having someone come on your door and give you a fine for using a non water efficient <laughs> water like washing machine, like dishwasher, hits a little too yeah. hard in the realism for me. So I'm kind of like, mm, you know, I'm not, uh, not too sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Thankfully, you can turn that off, and I did, but you know, still. Yeah, I just imagine how much backlash they would get if you couldn't turn that off. <laughs> I'm media check-in. Nice. So go, I am the media. Got some Dance Central booths. So they do have, like, 
what seems to be a dedicated like connect space which makes sense Probably going to see a lot more of like this uh, a bit later because we do, I do have one that like covers, I think, the Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft booths specifically. So we'll probably see these again in like a bit, you know, a bit more detail. Yeah. Oh, uh, drive, driver. Yeah, like driver. Yeah, Sanders driver San Francisco. It. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about this one, right? Because this is the one where he we like did. goes into other people's heads somehow i still don't know what the story is to it i almost feel like it might be better if i didn't know <laughs> i mean i haven't got around to playing like a lot of it from what i remember of like the beginning of the game the story is very weird yeah the one competition that gta had back then completely blew it i did I think part of that may be because it, well, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of it also like tried to be GTA and just couldn't really do it in like one of the driver Ooh. games. And then you had driver San Francisco, which I think just completely blew it. Or am I thinking of driver four, which is the one that you can like go through, that like, go to into other people's heads. Is that driver three? I can never remember. Or driver San Francisco. I, thought, I mean, I thought that was driver San Francisco. I don't know much about the other driver. Oh, champions online, man. <laughs> <laughs> centipede infestation okay so that probably is San i think you're right i think that is san francisco i think driver three is something different yeah oh brothers and arms furious four this one is actually really um this one has a story to it because this one became a completely different game um oh yeah I'm trying to. It, it's it's ah oh, it's such a such common. Ah oh, man, I'm, it's a game that you would know actually. I, I'm just trying to remember. Hold on, I'm gonna Google it. Uh. Oh maybe. Oh oh no maybe maybe you wouldn't know it actually. Uh. See, let's see. Okay, kind of. Okay, so like, so Brothers in Arms Furious Four was gonna be like, and I'm glad they didn't keep it a Brothers in Arms game because it was gonna be so different. Because I've talked about, uh, I've talked before about how much I like the the Brothers in Arms uh, series of games, right? Yeah. And you know, it was gonna be. You know, a, a sequel, but it wasn't really going to be Brothers in Arms, right? I think it was going to be more of like, you know, um, Inglorious Bastards, right? I think it was going to have more of that kind of feel to it, which isn't Band of, like, Brothers in Arms, right? Yeah. Uh, especially when you've been waiting years for, like, one a sequel to Hell's Highway, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> you know, Gears, you know, Gearbox or whatever, give it to me, please. Um... Because, yeah, it would have followed... See, it says here, it would have followed four new characters of an unnamed unit on a fictional romp through Germany after Hitler. So, that's not realistic. It's not r real. And Brothers in Arms is, like, based in reality, right? So, yeah. it would have been just very different, a bit too outlandish. Now, mm -hmm. it was then rebranded as Furious 4 and dropped the Brothers in Arms label. But that never came out. Right? Oh. Uh, but, 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 and here's where I say it, it kind of became a game you know. Um, many elements of the game were inherited and transferred to Battleborn. Oh, uh, really? Later. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. this right here is actually very interesting to see, because this game never happened, but it technically, it didn't really become Battleborn, but it, it influenced Battleborn. Right. Hmm. Which is very interesting to me. And that's like the one canceled game that I'm glad got canceled because it would have completely ruined uh, Brothers in Arms. I mean, it's still a dead franchise so far, but maybe one day. Yeah. Please, Gearbox, please stop it with Borderlands. Just please give me, you know, <laughs> just please give me Brothers in Arms. Gearbox works on... um. 
they, they did they work on on uh, Borderlands? I don't. They do, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. I just want to make sure I was getting the company correct in my head. Yeah. Our, our drone, the flying video game. I don't know if this ever became a thing. It looks like it's just. It's weird. It's just a drone, but they're saying it's a flying video game. You're just piloting a drone. Like, I get what they're saying. It's like, you, know, you have a camera and you're moving it. I guess maybe there's a game attached to it. But. I mean, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's just the idea that you could do it on your phone. I mean, probably. So it feels like a game? <laughs> Yo, oh, uh, Machinima. Machinima. So There's sad. So sad what happened to Machinima. I used to actually watch Machinima a lot back in the day because Machinima, when I got into Red vs. Blue, Machinima was just something I enjoyed. Like, I enjoyed watching stuff on Machinima.com because Red vs. Blue really made me appreciate Machinima as, like, a genre. And eventually, you know, it falls off, right? Because people get out of the Machinima meme, and then you move on. But Machinima was really huge. And I don't quite remember all the details, but, like, they got shut down just all of a sudden, right? Yeah. And all their videos wiped off the map, right? All just completely gone. Which is why, like, this is actually oddly topical, because when Rooster Teeth got shut down recently, this is why there were a lot of people backing up their YouTube channel. And, like, saving all the videos. Because they were like, okay, like, are they going to go the way of Machinima where just all of their videos suddenly are gone? Right? And you lose all that stuff from, like, internet history? You yeah. Because it's happened with Machinima going down and, and stuff with, like, digital media, like, YouTube videos. Is, like, when they're gone, they are gone unless someone backed them up. Right? Like, there's no doubt so many Machinima series that are just non-existent now because the website got, like, thanos right? Yeah. So, crazy, crazy sad. Did you ever watch any Machinima? Uh, I feel like I saw a few videos here and there, but I don't really remember watching, like, any series or anything. Okay, understandable. Yeah, you don't really seem like the kind of person that would, like, really watch something from Machinima. Well, I, don't know. I just think at the time I wasn't dumb. really watching a lot on YouTube. Understandable. And I never, yeah, and I never went to Machinima.com. <laughs> so. World of Tanks. Yeah. Good game for the time. Good game for the time. Uh, if I didn't get into World of Tanks, honestly, I probably wouldn't have gotten into War Thunder uh, like I did. Probably not, no. Like, not like I'm saying that they're good things either. Let's say World of Tanks went to shit. War Thunder also went to shit, but the difference is War Thunder got better, actually. Like, War Thunder became really bad, and now it seems like they kind of are making up for their mistakes, and the game's actually kind of good again. So... You know, who knows? Maybe they'll mess it up again eventually, <laughs> but you know, for now, at least War Thunder is pretty all right. World of Tanks, I think, is still in a pretty bad spot, from what I've heard. Yeah, I can't say because I never played either of them. I'm sure if War Thunder becomes bad again, I'll hear it from you or Joe. Oh, probably. Because <laughs> yeah, because I I don't have a problem like dropping War Thunder if it gets bad. I'm not one of those guys who I'm like, oh, I'm too invested in it, you know? Cliff. I remember Cliff. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's kind of really say about War Thunder. Like, or uh, World of Tanks. Like, the one thing I do kind of miss going from World of Tanks to War of Thunder is uh, people are going to hate me if you know what war, if you play World of Tanks. But it's the artillery. I did used to be an artillery player, but I played all the tanks, but like artillery was one I found really fun just because, you know, I got really good at actually like predicting shots and stuff. Mm. Uh, and the thing with artillery, what made them annoying is like you just sit on the back lines and depending on the artillery that you use, you may be able to just shoot anywhere like on the whole map. 
right? <laughs> uh, and there's no counterplay because it's like, well, you have to hide or you just have to not be seen or, you know, you have to rush them and try to kill them, uh, bef- you know, before they start shooting at you. But, like, it's really hard to kill artillery. Dance versus battle. Interesting. Hmm. Um... But the thing with artillery, and, and like if you get hit by artillery, you're probably going to die because they deal lots of damage, right? And they usually come down on top of your tank, which means it's the weakest armor, so it's probably going to explode you. Probably, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, everybody hated playing against artillery. Everybody would always get mad at artillery players. But I will say, I did get pretty good at pretty... And the thing with artillery, too, is when you'd shoot, it would have like... You know, time before landing, right? Uh, and you'd, you'd usually have, like, this wide area, which it may also land in, which you could, you know, fix by just using, like, getting a better gun or using, like, a different artillery thing, right? So, very interesting, very unique. And I did get really good at predicting my shots, where I could go, like, okay, this guy's going this way. If I position here and then shoot in, like, five seconds, ten seconds, I might be able to hit him, Right? I got pretty good at that, which made me a real piece of shit to play against sometimes. Uh, anyway, enough of the world of tanks, because we're going to have a look at the video game museum exhibit, which oh, sounds fun. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, from Fistful of Potions, like the name. Apeweapon.com, hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that is. Yeah, I can't say I've heard of it. Let's see. 8-bit weapon. Oh, it's a band. Oh. So that's probably the music that's playing then. Hmm. So they make 8-bit music, basically? That's kind of cool. Seems so. American chiptune music band formed in Ventura County, California. Hmm. Created around 1998, and they're still going. Oh, that's really cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it's mostly... So it's not all this. I was kind of curious. I mean, that sounds like really good music. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, actually, this is really cool <laughs> to see, like, a couple people that specialize in chiptune. Right? Yeah, it's not really a genre of music that you would see all too much. Yeah. Now you have a bunch of arcade machines. Okay, this is pretty cool. And the coach. The classic, the thing you don't see in a in a game room anymore. <laughs> the coach <laughs> <laughs> not unless you're watching games done quick not unless you're watching games done quick yeah oh look at all those uh, old school atari things too oh yeah. nice this is real nice uh in a cle- in television i think mm-hmm. i think that's in, I, a te- in television i think so or coleco vision i don't know I, I get the two confused I will admit I'm not super familiar with a lot of the older consoles, the ones that aren't Nintendo, anyway. I mean, that's understandable. Pac-Man. See, now this is really cool, right? Imagine going to a place like this and just having, like, 8-bit weapon playing, you know, chiptune music at you. While you're playing, like, a nice arcade machine. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Have the old, like, CRT TV set up. Which, at this point, I believe we're actually considered old. <laughs> which, you know. Yes, because at this point, we would have had plasma for quite a while. And I think LCDs, if they haven't started, they're going to be starting soon. Hey, it's Qbert! It's Qbert! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think CRTs would have been pretty phased out at this point. Yeah. Oh, uh, Famicom. Famicom chilling right there. I still found it neat nice. how you can, like, attach the controllers to the sides. Yeah, that's really cool. Nice. 
Ah, oh, PlayStation. Nice. Uh, Street Fighter, nice. I will watch you fail from... How many years is it now? Has it been? Since like 2011? I'm from the future. Hmm. Not Ryu, classic. Basic, but you know, you can't really go wrong with a good Ryu. <laughs> I respect his honesty. I don't even know who the hell that is. <laughs> I'll be honest, I can't actually tell who it is either. I don't know of any Street Fighter character that has like a ponytail. It's not Chen Li. It's not yeah, Cammy, because she's not sure. blonde. Ah, uh, Staff. I like how Staff is just like playing a Genesis. Hey, I mean, might as well. I mean, yeah. Yo, it's him. Rob. See, I've not heard of the Famicom box. Yeah, neither have I. You know what? Time to go to Google. I still have nice. 5% of this phone. I actually need to charge it. See, Famicom box. Not box art. Just give me the box. Ah, huh. okay. What's this? Oh, boy. That is indeed... Wow, okay. It looks very computer-like, actually. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Two controllers hooked up to it. Two standard NES controllers and the standard orange or gray NES zapper. So, had slots for up to 15 games. Most are only found with 10. So, was it... So, it's made to play it. Only the game specifically released for it. Huh. So I wonder if in I wonder if this was like a, a Japanese thing or maybe this was in arcades, and you like load mm. up with Nintendo games and because you have the two controllers and the light gun which were all attached to it. Oh okay. So I'm guessing maybe this was made for arcades, which is that would make a lot cool. of sense. Hmm. Wahoo! I was going to say, I heard that Mario Kart 64. I heard that. <laughs> Playing Toad. I mean, as you do. On ah, memory of. See, like, this is something really cool. Like, I think it'd be cool to go to, like, a video game museum. Yeah. Which I know exists. I know they do exist. Probably all in Japan, though, if I had to guess. Um, I mean, they probably have a few in Japan. I I think they have at least one in the States. I don't remember exactly where it is, like if it's in New York or if it's somewhere else. I'm pretty sure there's at least one in the States. There could be. I've never actually looked into it, so I couldn't really say. I, I, I know they exist. But that's about it. I just know they exist. Yeah. Now there's the ColecoVision. Aha, I was right. That is an Intellivision. Yeah, yeah, see, I didn't know my stuff. I was mm. right the first time. Then I was going to say, are those like. Oh, yeah, the Atari. Man, it's it's so weird looking at these old like video game consoles, you know. They they so look they look like like they fit the time period, you know? How they have kind of like that kind of like slight woody look, you know? Yeah. Like they got like the kind of wood like siding to them, like it's it's weird. Fistful of potions dot com. I wonder if that's still up. Oh, hold on. This isn't a playlist, so technically it's going to move me on to something else, which I may not want to do yet. Where would it move me, actually? Rexmas stage? Eh. See, some, see, some of these I did pick and <laughs> choose from. Fistful of yeah. Potions. Do you still exist, Fistful of Potions? 
Hmm. Fist full of potions. Hmm. I mean, I do see a podcast here. Looks like if they are still going, they haven't gone since at least 2015, maybe. Which is kind of sad, but... Oh. Yeah. That, that's the thing with the old, like, things like this, right? They either got, like, super big or they kind of, like, faded. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, it was definitely around this point when you had, like, a lot of podcasts springing up and you had a lot of, uh, like, gaming, like, smaller gaming journalism kind of websites. The unfortunate thing is, you know, easy to kind of get, you know... Shoved aside for like ones that just kind of get noticed and get lucky a bit sooner, right? Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Fistful of Potions. So now we have another Fistful of Potions, Dark Souls. I chose this one because Dark Souls, right? Uh, we got to talk about Dark Souls. It's the game that got me streaming, funnily enough. The reason why I'm here, technically, doing this. Undead Perish. I mean, that does make sense for them to put you there. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, it's it's early enough, right, so that things aren't, like, super crazy, but it's, yeah. you know, late enough that you at least have some stuff, right? Yeah. Although he be dying. He be dying. <laughs> Not, and I, I do notice how he's blocking with his weapon, by the way. I don't think he has a shield or anything. He just had a shield, though. He must have put it away. I think he put it away so he could dual wield. I see he has the um, the bow on it, like bow on his back. Ah, oh, the 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 boar. Oh, the boar. The Bye. pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that thing. You hollowed. Too hard for me. Relatable. Well, this one I actually have in like this tab here. This one I just thought was funny. It's just Minecraft at 2011, E3 2011. I just thought it was funny, so I'm including it because I respect that he just put on a Steve head. He's like gonna punch a tree, right? <laughs> and I actually very much respect that Fistful of Potions is like they have all these other ones. Where it's like, yo, here's all these like actual things, and then it's just like Minecraft at E3 2011 is just the dude where just Steve head and punching a tree. See, these are the kind of like early year like internet kind of things that I really appreciate, where it's just people yeah. goofing off and having some fun, you know. That stuff is kind of fun. It is, it is. Uh, okay, so next uh, would be this one. So I chose Mod Nation Racers because I saw something interesting, uh, right? I saw something okay. really interesting in this specifically that I wanted to, to just see, right? I saw it in the thumbnail. So I got curious. Uh, uploaded by GameSpot, right? So thank you, GameSpot. No introduction needed for you. But I still appreciate you. Now, granted, this one we can probably two times speed through because it's just kind of showing more Mod Nation, Racer Mod Nation Racers. But... Guys, we are back with another PlayStation Vita demo. Now we're going to have a look at Mod Nation Racers. Uh, could you go ahead and introduce yourself for yeah. our audience? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Brandon. I'll get producer of Mod Nation Racers. All right, excellent. Brandon, uh, tell us about Mod Nation Racers. It's a game that was on the PS3, it was on the NG, or it was on the PSP, and yeah. now it's on the Vita. How are you guys taking advantage of this hardware? Well, I mean, it's, it's really cool to work on this hardware because it, it gives us so many tools to, to work with. So we decided let's do a ground up effort. Uh, let's make it from the ground up. No, no porting whatsoever. So that means we, we were able to do All right, so we're making things from the ground up. Uh, no porting. So I'm going to show you how to do it in, lessons, uh, in a couple seconds. All right. So take full advantage of the, the front touch panel. We could uh, draw your track. And in seconds. You got yourself a track. <laughs> and we'll go through some of the, the cool stuff that you can do with it. Um, so oh, yeah, I do like how he's like, okay, can, can we get this on camera? Can, 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 we, can we get the camera, Jujur? Uh, what's called on the edit? This is our uh, all in one uh, spline editing tool. Okay. Uh, see, we have uh, height, uh, road edge, shoulder, and. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I guess that would help. Live internet television, everybody. There they go. Okay. We apologize for the speed bumps, no pun intended. Yep, now we're, now we're gonna create a little uh, bank. And using the copy mode, we can copy it all the way through. So, we just want to make it really so and, and what I noticed here, about, right, right yeah. is this is just the same track that we saw at the conference. I mean, yeah. So I'm curious so I'm curious if they're going to, like, show any differences or if they're just, like, trained so hard that they're just going to do the same exact thing. I wouldn't be surprised because they did seem pretty specific about what they were showing at the conference, so I... I'm not really expecting to see anything different. Yeah, like, this looks like the same exact thing. Even where he's kind of putting the trees, I think. Yeah. 
and, and the buildings. Like I know, I know, Mod Nation Racers on the Vita didn't really do that well. Yeah. It's currently not good. So I don't mind kind of pooping on this one a little bit, right? Just kind of going like, hmm, very uncreative. Now, what would have impressed me if he's like, okay, we're gonna make a whole new track, and then he makes a whole new track and does like different stuff, right? Yeah. He's like, this is just, as far as I can tell, the exact same track. I mean, pretty much, yeah. But yeah, Which, um, honestly, this kind of just gives more credence to my theory from the conference where it's like, okay, maybe the game wasn't super ready to show, so they were only showing the track builder. Yeah, like, I, I think you're probably right, which, once again, is why I wanted to show it, right? Because I figured yeah. it's kind of telling. Quit race. Okay, we're going to see something new. Oh, no, wait. Okay, well, this is different. Quick race, okay. Okay. Give them credit for this, the show and something else. Oh, yeah, so this is what they said before, because didn't they say they were going to have, like, some tracks made, like, from the original game? Uh, poured it over to this, and they'd be, like, on the show floor? Yeah, some of the ones from the online. Now, so if you made this, if anybody's watching this and you made this track... That's pretty cool. I got it at E3, right? Yeah. Got to E3. Looks like a nice track, actually. It does. Oh, nice although, jumps. although, you know what? I want to actually go back. And, and this I do want to play it like one speed, just a normal speed. Just because I'm curious okay. if we're going to see like any like leg or anything like that. Here we are in a live True. Environment. There we are. Which was created on the PS3. That's crazy. Also, ignore the fact that my uh, Megan wouldn't see it, but that my underlay popped up for a second. I just clicked back on OBS, so it, it, it ah. confused it a smidge. Uh, ignore that. It does yeah. seem to be yeah. lagging a little bit, yeah. There is a lot of lag to this. Like, I don't know if that's just because of this track, because it seems like there's a lot going on, but it does seem to be lagging quite a bit more than I remember it playing on PS3. So, yeah. Well, see, because I know that was part of the problem uh, yeah. that the reviewer stated was that the game was, like, laggy, I believe. And, yeah, you can really see this here. Oh. What? I'm surprised they showed this one off if it's lagging this much. Yeah, right? Like, this is actually weird. Maybe you're right. Maybe they were like forced to show this off really quick. It seems like it was rushed quite a bit, yeah. Which is a shame, because like Mod Nation Racers was a pretty interesting franchise for the time. I don't know if it would do well nowadays, because I mean, I don't know if people really care as much for like user generated content. I'm sure people would still play it if it was decent. Like, but, how slow this is. Yeah. It's yeah, just like, not look very good. Yeah, and, like, I think you're right, because, like, because we have dreams, right? Like, we had dreams, which is basically yeah. user-generated stuff, and it didn't really live for as long as even I was kind of hoping it would. So, yeah, I think you're right that maybe the, the whole user-generated content thing might be kind of on the out. I think there is still probably a market, but, like, I think it's a bit more niche than what it was back then. Yeah, because it kind of depends on what it is. Because something like Dreams, you have to be really creative and really willing to do something completely different. But you take something like Mario Maker and you kind of have like an uh, established framework to build levels off of. And I think people generally like stuff like that more, right? So they might yeah. be okay with something like this. Like if they had a Mario Kart that had like user-made levels or something. But yeah. I just don't know how well a game like this would do because, I mean, the game itself was okay, but it wasn't, like, a, a super amazing racing game. Yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah, so now we're just purely in the in the GameSpot area. Okay. So, mostly, a lot, I think the rest of these might be from GameSpot, apart from, like, a few at the end. Um, so, once again, from GameSpot, West Hall Overview with Homer Rabera. I think it's Rabera. I'm trying to remember, because I would have seen this. I'm pretty sure I would have seen this live. Here the Barra, there you go. That's close. I got my lanyard on. I got a fresh new haircut, and that can only mean one thing. It's E3 2011. 
Mm, so does he only cut his hair once a year? <laughs> Maybe. Just to give you an idea of what you can be looking forward to this week. Let's get started. Let's get started with the West Hall. Infamous 2 First specifically. Foremost, Interesting. Us, the GameSpot booth. Nice. We'll be offering up 80 plus hours of live video coverage. I used to watch that all the time. At E3. The games you're looking During E3. The show, 60 plus floor reports. Two streaming live backpack cameras. Six tonight on the spot. Oh, that's right. They had the backpack cameras. I forgot about that. Sega, Sony, and Microsoft. Mm. And much, much Cause yeah, those were like just, right I think, constant window. like streamed as booth people booth walked the show floor. Code Cafe. First party titles at their booth include the Legend. Of but what successor? Behind the GameSpot booth is Nintendo. Most importantly, at Nintendo's booth is the playable Wii successor, codenamed Project Cafe. Ah, so is Wii U. Party titles at their booth include uh. the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which will be on our live stage show on Wednesday, and Kid Icarus Uprising. Right next to Nintendo is Sony. They'll also have a new console playable. <laughs> Dude, that was a really long pause. <laughs> that was it's Sony. <laughs> I was like, okay, are they gonna elaborate? <laughs> among others. The PlayStation 3 titles that Sony will have at their booth include Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, Resistance 3, Journey, and Star Hunt, ah, Journey. All of which will be on our live stage show throughout the week. Located Journey is such a fun game. Is the SOE booth. There they'll have a newly announced title called Payday. Ah, uh, Payday. And we'll Good game. And drop by there to tell you what this game is all about. Yeah. On the far end of the West. Yeah, you know, funnily enough, somewhere on uh somewhere on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know if it's still uploaded. I did have a friend before I even started streaming. Uh I think it was like a little bit before I started streaming. Like maybe a couple years before. He uh had his own Let's Play channel, actually. Uh, he mm -hmm. went through like a couple different names. I'm not sure what name he would have been into, under. I know he went by Distortor Distortorius at one point. Uh, and he changed it again to like, I think Frog something or other. I don't quite remember. But uh, he got me in like a couple of his videos. Me and Tots actually. Tots was in um, a couple of them as well, actually. He, Tots wouldn't remember, but we played through the entirety of Payday uh, in his videos. So who knows? You could find like Proto streaming me. Uh, just out there <laughs> on YouTube somewhere, right? That'd be funny. Played Worms as well, like once, I think. Sure to drop by there to tell you what this game is all about. On the far end of the West Hall is Capcom. At their booth, they'll have Mega Man Legends 3 prototype version and. <sighs> <laughs> that never happened. Oh, it never happened. No. Oh, God. Now, was this turned into something, or... God, this is such a, such a, like, such a, a kick in, like, every single sensitive part of my body. Because I have always wanted Mega Man Legends 3. Always. I even say now, like, every time there's some kind of thing with Capcom involved, I'm like, could this be the year where we finally get Mega Man Legends 3? I'm still hoping. That's how much I want it. Right? Yeah. To get my boy off the moon. Hashtag get Mega Man off the moon. You know? Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it got cancelled. Just considering, like, the footage they had there looked pretty complete. It did. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Ah, uh, Skyrim. Skyrim! All of these games will get the stage show treatment with Skyrim and Rage on Wednesday and Prey 2 on Thursday. That about wraps up our look at the West Hall. Next up, we'll be taking a tour of the oh so raucous South Hall and all the folks that set up camp over there. Until then, let's go back to the stage. Nah, I mean, that seemed interesting. Uh, my cam day more highlights. I think I have that one too. Yeah, I do. Oh, that's cool. I don't say, imagine going up to like one of the booth babes and going like, so how do you feel about like this game here? It's like, dude, I was hired to stand here, man. <laughs> I can't really talk about this. 
I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them don't even really know about the games, like aside from what they're trained on, right? <laughs> like probably. Yeah, talking about my friend actually, my my one friend from like back in the day with his let's play channel. He did a let's play of Deus Ex Human Revolution. <laughs> so in a weird way, this is very much like all a bit of a nostalgia hit for me. I mean, that's always nice, yeah. Okay, see, I would have just said humanity. Boom. There you go. That's your theme. The, to the point, it's a punch. Gets people interested. Now she's over explaining. Right? Why do we do what we do? Yeah, right? Like, like literally, all you need to say here is, like, what's the theme of the game? Like, what's something from the story? Humanity. You right? Because it is. I, don't, I have not even played Human Revolution. And I know it's about humanity. Right? And what makes us human, you know? Yeah, I was saying, because isn't a big part of the game is, like, them deciding whether or not they wanted to use, like, cybernetic enhancements? It's something to that effect. I think there's also just, like, a general theme of, like, if you have cybernetic enhancements, you're seen as lesser. Uh. Oh, wait, is this Rocksmith? I believe this is Rocksmith. Oh, okay. Which is really cool. Um, really cool game. Not one I've ever played, but... You know, yeah, neither have I. In the era of, like, Rock Band and Guitar Hero, to have, like, a game where it's like, yo, you can use a real guitar and, like, even learn guitar through that, like, that's really neat. Yeah, I always thought the concept of it was pretty cool. I just never played it. So Every I also time wanna... I see this, I'm like, man, I need to play Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> you should. Uh, so I also just want to point out how, like, when we did Rocksmith... Wait, hold on. When yep. we were going on to Rocksmith... <laughs> Final Fantasy 13 2. That's not what this oh, is. Someone messed up in the editing spot. room. Someone messed up in the editing room. <laughs> and then boom, we're actually in Final Fantasy 13 too. That's funny. <laughs> you got a rating of zero because they didn't give him any points, so they gave him one torn leather. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's like, here you go, here's your consolation prize. <laughs> That site is probably non-existent anywhere, that page, anyway. Probably. Uh, so you got the Microsoft Booth Tour, which I think should be pretty interesting. Hey folks, Homer Ibarra back here once again, South Hall. This time I'm in front of the Microsoft Booth, and uh, I think we're going to have to break this up into two segments because this booth is pretty big. Uh, obviously, from the press conference, a lot of the news coming out was uh, for the Kinect. So right now, and we're standing in front of Kinect Sports Season Two. This will be through uh, 2011 by IGN. Interesting. Coming, uh, and as you can I don't know. I don't know if I like that actually. And, uh, some of the games that they is that guy from TH? No, is that THQ? It's not the THQ logo on his shirt, right? I don't think so. No. To this edition is golf. They got uh, this dude putting for birdie. Let's see if he can hit the cup. Hit it. Hit it, hit it. Nice putt, good putt. All right. This guy, I think they were playing football back here a second ago, but I think they're just getting started. So let's move. This is a lot of space for Connect Sports. There's some more it is a lot of space for Connect Sports. Bubbles here, but in the meantime, we got some Xbox Live Arcade stuff. 
Bastion, which is a uh, toy soldiers. One of, uh, our old nice. Huh. Uh, oh, I love Bastion. Such a oh. good game. Bastion is so uh, good. I cool. actually want to replay that. Homage to old school. Um, yeah, because this was Super Giant's first game, wasn't it? I believe so. We got Toy Soldiers Cold War over yeah, here. Yeah, such a fun let's, game. Uh, let's move through. Ooh, we got I do like the original Toy Soldiers. Never played Cold War, but I do like uh, the original. XBLA. Yeah, I never played Cold War either. Uh, let's move on over here. How's it going, man? Homer from GameSpot. How you doing? What's your name? Amir. I'm, Amir. I'm the studio director for Super Giant. Games. Oh, awesome! So you must know Greg. Oh, I'm the studio director. Nice. Hopefully, you're doing good, Greg. Hopefully. A lot of folks on our site know about this game, but just give us the real quick, quick top of the line. Real quick. Uh, rundown on Bash. Bastion is a hand-painted, uh, fully narrated action RPG from Super Giant Games, which is a. Okay, I do like how they do give out like ribbons to these games. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Small team of seven people. Uh, it's coming cool. out on Xbox Small Live team of seven people. Arcade. Man, um, they did a lot with that. I didn't know they were that small we'll when they started out. Weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the quick rundown, Amir. Yeah. Say what's up to Greg for us. Yeah, we'll do. And we'll move on right over here. Sorry, excuse us. Uh, and uh, let's see. We got some some more Connect going on here. And Kudo Sonoto was talking about Connect Fun Labs yesterday or, uh, at the Microsoft press conference. A lot of new additions applications for but guys a dude watching uh, we better better go and like actually show him some stuff uh, oh, <laughs> looks like just finished the demo so not necessarily the best visual thing here <laughs> bad <but> timing <laughs> we also got <laughs> Love it. disneyland adventures here let's not try to let's not let's try not to get in this dude's shot but uh yeah this is this was sneak in at the press conference looks like this dude's going through uh what does that look like pirates of the caribbean does that look like pirates of the caribbean right there Seems so. What do you think, Warren? Looks like it, yeah. He's nodding his head, yeah. So, looks like players are trying to avoid hitting those bombs. I don't know if this dude's having much success, though. <laughs> All right, yeah, he's not doing too good on that front. <laughs> not really. XBLA, Summer of Arcade. We got From Dust. Which is an oh, From Dust title. is a cool game. Looks like yeah, cool that game. one always looked really interesting. Yeah, I, I played it a oh few God, years ago when it came out, an and out. I thought it was just Yikes. really interesting because I never really played like a, a quote unquote people. god game like that. All those poor people. I oh, remember boy. that level. <laughs> All right, so that's from Dust. Uh, we got Warhammer 40, 40k Kill Team, Miss Explosion Man here. We got uh, Street Fighter 3 Thirds. Explosion Man and Miss Explosion Man. My God, I forgot about Explosion Man. Uh, yesterday. Such a good and game. Yeah. All right. Kill All team. Sorts of titles. Let's move on to the outside of the booth. And uh, some more. Oh, these are these are the the bigger titles. Obviously, we got Ace Combat Assault Horizon, WWE 12. We got Catherine right over there. That's coming out fairly soon. Uh, there you go. You know all about Catherine. We saw that yesterday. Yeah, I didn't realize that was part of the Xbox booth. That's interesting. For a demo of that. Catherine's pretty cool. On Future Soldiers, one of the big I will play it one day. Talked about at the press conference. Yes, and please. And I will answer all questions really honestly, awesome. even if it may get That's me in trouble. I don't know how many of them might, but... Oh, I'm, I'm so curious. All questions will be answered honestly. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I need to get back to full body and do the rest of the endings I haven't done. One of the things that I thought was really, really cool, obviously, and I thought I think a lot of people did, was the gunsmith thing. Uh, are you guys? Is that going to be something that people are going to be able to get their hands on at the booth here? Well, we have the demo of the gunsmith over there. We can connect. You can check it out. So it's good to see some actual uh, gameplay now. The game. That isn't just yeah. from the connect. Yeah. Awesome feature of Ghost Recon. Cool. Well, thanks for giving us the quick rundown. Uh, enjoy the rest of your show. Oh man, there's so much to see here. How am I doing on time, Warren? Uh, he's giving me the old wrap it up sign. But when I return, we'll be looking at the other half of Microsoft booth. There's a bunch of other stuff. We got Gears of War 3, Forza 4. So we'll go check those I out. I see his ass three revelations stuff. in the Let's background the there. Stage. I do too. Trade in a game. No, I'm not going to trade in any games. Uh, so we will get back to that one. I do have these a bit more out of order. We'll do THQ back next. Here on the show floor, E3 2011, back in the South Hall, in front of the THQ booth. And as you can see right here, one of their biggest titles, uh, aside from the whole UFC Undisputed franchise, they're branching off. They're doing a Connect uh, trainer 
UFC trainer. And, Interesting. Uh, definitely is one of those things where it's kind of getting into the whole fitness uh, genre that that's kind of popping up now. And obviously, yeah, that did become a whole genre uh, for a bit. Are yeah. Legend of Zelda Skyward so, Sword. So uh, I have like a Skyward Sword guy like going around trying some stuff. Down, learn how to ground and pound, that's cool. Learn how to throw some elbows. Learn how to throw some knees. Let's uh let's see if somebody's in it. Throw some knees. Over here. <laughs> uh, this seems about to get started, but let's see if somebody is in action here. We got some Margaritaville online here. Um, what's up, ladies? How you doing? Okay, okay. All right. Over here we got MX versus ATV Alive. Ah, uh, nice classic of series. Long running off road biking ATV. Don't think they exist game. anymore, but they used that used to be a pretty big series. Let's see. I was gonna say I don't really remember it. Customize so, your experience yeah. with DLC. Oh boy. UFC trainer. So let's go over here. We got somebody demo in the game. Let's see. Let's see what this girl's doing right here. She's getting her. Uh, she's getting her one-two on real quick. Let's see. Let's see. There you go. Boom. One-two. Kick to the leg. Jab, cross, hook. Doing all right. Uppercut. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Looking good. All right. So obviously, you know, you, you're in the you're in the mood to burn some calories. UFC trainer is the game for you. Right behind us, we got. Uh, I mean, it seems so okay. Well. Uh, it does. It's gonna be on the show floor, or it's gonna be on our stage show. I think tomorrow or maybe Thursday. I'd have to check our schedule, but you know, Randy Orton is obviously. The big uh, personality in this. Randy game. Orton still highlight. still he's going too. Well, kind of. I think he's. Glory. I think he's retired now. Tattoos going. <laughs> Alberto <laughs> Del Rio though definitely nowhere. Uh, probably not gonna be touched by any respectable company for uh, a while. Dude's kind of a dick, oh, is Alberto, Alberto Del Rio. All right, so more on I was gonna say, is there some kind of controversy with him? Yeah, I think he like. We got some abused his girlfriend, who was also a wrestler. Right there. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, good. yeah, and he, I think he was just a piece of shit. Facebook. So, from what I heard. Mm, and, uh, okay. Coming back this way, we got. Not a very good guy. For I said expired. Hmm. Looks like for the. Looks like they got the so I don't recall like body count. Super yeah, I've never seen this. Um, Randy Orton, though, good guy. Good guy is Randy Orton. Uh, Alberto Del Rio may be a bit of a piece of shit, but Randy Orton, still really good. Just want to make sure. I don't want to get on his bad side if he ever sees this. I don't want to get RKO yeah. out of nowhere. Kill Team, which is the uh, Xbox Live Arcade title from the Warhammer 40K universe. I wonder if this one's on Steam. I think it is. No, I did not say RPG. So, uh, I'm actually kind of curious if I actually have that one or not. Uh, not on camera. I not on camera. That's all right. We can schedule interviews, though, at the PR. Okay. We will schedule an interview. All right. So let's move on. So what else we got here at the THQ booth? We got some you draw over here. Uh, looks like it's a drawing application. Ooh. Interesting. For. Oh, you draw. Console <laughs> oh, for I like how you just kind of schedule it. It's like, ah, oh, draw. Mm, yeah, okay. You draw. Create the world. Okay, that's kind of. Awesome. Excuse me, excuse me, that's kind of neat. Folks got going on. Got a nice yeah, it was a cool thing. There. It was like from that age of peripherals, uh, and some, they kind of like ocean. severely overestimated demand little, uh, and like uh, ended up losing a ton of money here? on the tablets just they beach. made. Just a beach. Not yeah, ripped, dude. <laughs> I want to be there. <laughs> so we're seeing, <laughs> you know, before the disaster, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing Kill uh, Team on available. Steam, and I don't have it in my library, so I don't know so, if it's on Steam or not. Maybe not, um, then. Interesting. That's available right now, currently. But it's, it's originally made for kids, but um, it's really great. Like, adults can use it, too. Um, and there are a bunch of, like, games that are developing, and there are some that are already developed for this um, hardware. I don't know. It's All right. Awesome. Well, continue See, I think part of the problem with Udra is like yeah. this is around the time when like drawing tablets were right, just so becoming we'll more common you draw more you draw so it's like yeah. if you wanted to be if you're so if you're like an artist you'd probably already have like like a, a, a was a waco bamboo tablet or something ready to like draw on your pc or laptop right yeah all right thank you very much 
got a little you draw PR. Yeah, like it's not a bad idea, but it's just like they made this whole peripheral to sell to people that was very niche. They said they were going to develop games for it, and as far as I know, they didn't develop any games for it. <laughs> Rip. And like, I don't remember how much it cost, but I would assume it was probably relatively expensive for what it was. Uh, I believe Chris Waters has a review up for that game. But Red right Faction's now, cool. Speak, so if you want to check yeah. Go peep it. I played one of them. I don't remember which one. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I did play a little bit of one of them. Be on our stage show, so oh, Space Marine. Uh, be sure to tune Space in Marine's good game. I've never got, got around to playing it, but it's always looked really fun. Huge, and the sequel's coming man. up pretty soon. Yeah, it is. I, I think you're uh, the third. Hmm. Yeah. Our good friend John Miller is, uh, decent. Still decent, but like we talked about before, it's kind of when it started to get a bit too quirky. Yeah. Also, it looks like Star Wars The Old Republic on the left there. Let me see. When? Here? Yeah. Yes, looks like it. Earlier today to go check out that, to demo that game. A lot of, uh, a lot of punching fools in the junk, apparently. True. Let's see. So we're going around here, Space Marine, or Saints Row the Third. Oh, we got Metro Last Light. That was the game that uh, they showed off last. Into the that Metro. Kind of apocalyptic, uh, <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. The world of Metro is such an interesting universe too. I really, really like like the story Metro for Metro. Yeah, I really need to play them. So uh, that should give you an idea of where that play takes place. But that apparently is behind closed doors. As is one of my favorite titles, my favorite franchises, which is UFC Undisputed. Uh, they Ooh. went away from the whole annual uh, release, and they're they're taking their time to to make this one all super sick. So I can't wait for that. Apparently, Hoist Gracie was at THQ, was at the booth today, and nobody told me about it. But hey, whatever. <laughs> Chuck Liddell is here tomorrow, so maybe a little bit, a little bit salty. Anyway, so people wait in line here for Metro Last Light. I was gonna say they got a big and, uh, uh, Metro car. It's kind of cool. Huh. That is cool. I was gonna say this is a very big boost and like intricate boost for a closed so booth, close but maybe that's part of the appeal. Possibly the loudest part of the booth. So uh, yeah, THQ booth, South Hall, E3 2011. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Good job. See, that's <laughs> the camera guy that knows what he's doing, right? I was gonna say you can just cut it there, and then you had to do like a zoom into the roof. <laughs> like I think they did do that a fair bit in some of these. I think they did kind of turn it into a bit of a joke eventually, but I don't yeah. quite remember. But that's a camera guy who, who knows what's up. So Namco hey, Namco so Bandai like, uh, booth. Here at day two of nice. 2011 in the South Hall. I'm at the Namco Bandai booth, and we're taking a look at Inversion with the producer Rick White. How's it going, Rick? You know, See, I've never really, really heard much about right, Inversion. How's the show going so far? Yeah, it's been pretty exciting. We've had a lot of people come through playing the multiplayer and asking a lot of questions about the gravity. Cool. So we're taking a look at inversion here, and uh, I'm going to just step aside so our cameraman can get a good shot. So of I don't it. want to make any assumptions about you, Rick, but you seem really tired today. Uh, kind of like a post -pop, a post -pop I mean, he has to talk like this basically all day. That would be exhausting, man. It would be. Like, for me, it would be exhausting enough just walking around the show floor because I get really tired really quickly in, like, crowded rooms. Mm, true. True. That would make it a bit extra exhausting, depending on the kind of person he is. I mean, if he's, like, able to do this on camera, he's probably a pretty outgoing person. I'm just not, and I don't like being around people. So, like, when I walk through crowds, like, even just at the mall, like, it doesn't take me long to feel tired. Now, you guys heard it here first. You see Megan on the street? Avoid her, because she don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know you're not quite like that. Get objects floating in the air. Then you I mean, them no. Throw them. Most of the time. Uh, I don't like talking to random people, <laughs> but at the same time, if he came out to me and said, Hey, I recognize you from Fragon's video, then I'd probably talk to you, have a good conversation. Which you would use to pin a bunch of guys to the ground. You can then, like, throw a grenade. Um, so we have mobile cover. And what he just did there was Wee. a shockwave, which is more of a close in defense. Huh. So if you got a lot of guys swarming you, you so was this game good? With the gravity, which either pins from the ground. I don't know. Very, very cool. So now I'm going to say probably not, not just, just because I've never really seen a lot of it. Yeah, so I mean, uh, that's good logic. Pretty much the world's I mean, there's a good chance like it was pretty okay. Like they got some interesting mechanics with like 
for the gravity stuff. I don't know. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, received mixed reviews on all platforms. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Digital Fix gave the PlayStation 3 version a score of 6 out of 10 and called it a solidly unspectacular shooter. A game that feels instantly familiar and not in a good way. The game lives heavily from more illustrious sources, while its own unique so well, its own unique selling point, gravity powers, never feels fully exploited. But equally, the game is a solid and reasonably well-produced shooter that is fun to play, particularly with other people. As long as you don't re expect a revolution, you will have a good time. Oh, okay. I did look it up on price charting because I was kind of curious. It goes for about twenty dollars USD. So I mean, if we wanted to pick it up, it'd be pretty cheap. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's not the kind of game that people be like swarming to try and find. No, probably not. So it looks like you guys are, and the game. So, so the naked eye for me looks pretty polished, but you guys got a little bit ways to go. When is the game coming out and what for, for what platforms? Uh, Inversion's coming out in February 7th, 2012. And um, it comes out on PlayStation 3, 360, and the PC. He didn't really think about that. He did. <laughs> like I said, he's probably tired. He seemed tired today. Yeah. On the cutoff, Homer. Oh, nope. Nope. Sega Boot Tour, that probably is next in my list, but... Go back. Right. Uh, it is indeed next on my list. I had hey Sega. Folks, Homer Barra back here once again, South Hall, this time at the Sega booth. And as you can see behind me... Yeah, Sega seems like it has a fun booth. A bunch of Sonics on all over the place. Later this week, so let's just pop yeah, they're definitely going like for that 90s nostalgia with like the giant figures and stuff. Yeah. Which makes out, sense, because uh, Sonic Generations is kind of like... We got, we got I don't know if it's considered an anniversary Sonic game, but like, uh, it, it takes yeah, old Sonic and brings it with new Sonic, Sonic which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's considered so an anniversary game, because I think it's like yeah, Sonic's... Over here. I think they even make a point in the story uh, that it's his birthday. Like a specific oh. birthday. We got some, uh, like 15 okay. or something. Ah, oh, nice. Dude's here. looking cool. This guy. Okay, I thought <laughs> Sonic 06 was the 15th <laughs> anniversary. Maybe this is the 20th. Oh, this could be 20th. This could be 20th. Uh, I don't have, oh, okay. I have on. Uh, let me that would make a lot of sense, else. yeah. Got more Sonic Generations. Generations. Excuse me, gentlemen. Sorry. Oops. We're going to squeeze right in here. Yeah. A whole booth of Sonic Generations. Oh, uh, yeah. 20th anniversary. You're right. Ah, uh, uh, okay. That demo on the, on oh, nice. The show, uh, on our stage show. Oh, nice. Dude, the Knuckles. So we'll hear a whole From Sonic Adventure. So that explains why they have all the Sonic games, very, very like, soon, box Sonic arts thing. along yeah. the outside of this. Um, Coming out of the Sonic Generation yeah, that section. makes sense. Right in front of us, we actually have the Aliens Colonial Marines Theater. And uh, obviously, that's one of the biggest games. <laughs> <laughs> These guys looking super hardcore, ready to smoke some aliens. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Looking tough. That's a behind closed doors thing here. <laughs> uh, Cameron looked almost a little scared when he saw her. Sega Rally Online little bit. Arcade and Guardian Heroes. A reboot of the of the classic Guardian Heroes uh, game. Huh. Let's see. Let's see what we got here on the other so side. So I've never heard of Guardian Heroes. Guardian Me Heroes neither. And Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. It's got a cool art style. It does. Well, iPad action. I don't think anybody's playing that right now. It's all good. Check that out. Oops, sorry. Sega All Stars Racing. Here. Oh, I always forget about this game. <laughs> Me too. I heard it was really fun, though. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, cool. like for a kart racer, rips. I've heard it's pretty all oh, right. Yeah. Not oh, as good oh, as Mario oh, no. Kart, but better than a lot of the knockoffs. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm only driving with one hand, so keep cut me some slack. But obviously, all right, that's Sonic All Stars. That's a pretty fast reload <laughs> after <laughs> death, huh? That is. Let's move on over here. We got some Renegade Ops. Hey, how's it going? What are you showing off? Oh God, Renegade! I totally put you on spot. Did what are you doing? We're doing booth tours. Do you have anything new showing off for Guardian Heroes? Well, Guardian Heroes, I believe we're we're showing the first couple levels. Um, I believe more of the the modes are, are active, which is really awesome. See, I think this is why I liked watching Gamespot because it was literally just a dude walking around. He would just go like, "Hey, tell me what's your game," and then like they would do it. Like I don't know, it just always seemed very like on the spot, which I liked. Yeah. All right, let's let's take a look. Play yourself? 
Well, you know what? Ooh, exclusive. Ooh. And and hold the microphone at the same time. So why don't we just talk while this gentleman plays? How's that? All right, so you came by earlier this month to show off this game, and, uh, you know, needless to say, I'm pretty stoked about it. Uh, give us an idea what you guys are showing off at the show this, this time. So basically, we're showing off the first level, and, and in this uh, booth, we are showing off co-op multiplayer. Man, look at him go. So right now, we've got four kiosks set up. Yeah, it's pretty uh, fast and floaty, huh? It is. Oh. <laughs> it looks interesting. So um, it's a twin stick shooter developed by Avalanche and published by Sega. We're very Avalanche, that's a game company I haven't heard of in a long time. And, uh, we're all, yeah. Because uh, what did they do? What do they do again? I, I don't know, to be honest. Because I remember them. So they played games I liked. Oh, shit. There's like Avalanche Software and Avalanche Studios. I don't know which one it is. I guess which everyone made Renegade Ops. So I'll just look up I was going to say, whatever one made Hogwarts Legacy is probably the other one. <laughs> oh, Renegade Ops is on Steam. Did you say it was on oh. Steam? I think so. It scored really well, uh, apparently, in general. Oh, huh, okay. Uh, developer Avalanche Studios. Oh, okay. So they... Oh, Just Cause. Okay, that's probably it. Oh, that makes sense, uh, yeah. Just Cause, Mad Max, Rage 2. Oh, they made The Hunter as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, hearing that kind of uh, resume that they have, it, it makes sense why this would be so zany. Yeah. I guess they're working on another game called Contraband now. That's interesting. Hmm. All right. Price point? You guys haven't announced it yet, but those details will be will be coming soon. Very, very soon. Good. Hopefully. Hopefully, very soon. All right. Cool. Is there anything else that you could show us right now? Um. Let's see. Do you want to see uh, some of the other digital kiosks? Sure. Yeah. Let's go take a look. Let's take a stroll. I was kind of freewheeling it, but now that we got you here, I'm sure you can be a little bit more. <laughs> I was just saying, this girl is like surprisingly okay <laughs> with just touring him around. It's pretty nice. She is. That's pretty nice, especially when he just like put her on the spot like he did. Yeah, and she's and I just love how she seemed just really confused and said she's like, oh yeah, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, what are you doing? I assume she was just playing it up, right? But still, possibly. But and actually, we've sort of developed this game and added new features. Give her like a pay raise from like a decade yeah. in the future. Give her a pay raise. We were developing for for the iPad one, but then when the iPad two was announced, we were oh yeah. Crazy Taxi. Man, the yeah, iPad sure. 2. Yeah, let's go talk to him real quick. Back uh, when they were only on the second one. Brand management. Yeah, I don't even know First what they're on anymore. All -Stars. I mean, <laughs> hey, if, knowing <laughs> Apple, they're releasing a new one every six months. Give us the quick rundown of Sega. Probably, yeah. Uh, Sonic and Sega All Stars racing on the iPad 2. So Sonic and Sega All Stars. Honestly, I wouldn't racing. be surprised if they have like the uh, next two essentially soon. all finalized and just manufacturing Basically, it now. You, uh, Probably. You get to race as your ten or one of one of your ten favorite Sega characters. You got like Sonic, Tails, Eggman. I do wonder if there's somebody out there that literally has every kind of iPad or iPhone. Oh, I'm sure there's someone out there who's like a collector of them. So I'd be curious to see them all like lined up side by side. You know what? That would be really interesting. Yeah. See how much the generations changed. And before they all basically look the same. <laughs> You know what? I would not be surprised. Because, <laughs> I mean, at least with the phone, you'd be able to tell, okay, they look a little bit different. They're a different size. I feel like with the iPads, they have not changed very much, aside from maybe getting a little bit bigger. I could see it. Maybe a bit more screen, like, taking up the thing, right? Yeah, maybe slightly thinner. You know, probably not a huge difference. Have it on all your iDevices. Nice. Very good. That was the nice, quick, top-of-the-line stuff. Thanks for joining us. See, at least with game consoles, pretty much every console is, like, really different from one another. Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. What's up, dude? How you doing? How are you? Hey, it's always good, man. It's E3 time. Yeah. Dude, Garden Heroes. Let's let's take, let's take let's look at it real quick. You, you just bugged the other girl to look at it, and now you're looking at it with him. <laughs> I know, right? I like how she just snuck off, though. 
Now, as you know, Sega Saturn <laughs> is notorious to hard, uh, difficult to work with, so we're really proud not only to announce Guardian Heroes, which was one of the best Sega Saturn games of all time. You know, I guess it's kind of a good point. I bet you it is kind of hard to work on, like, work on the updated like getting some code from, like, old school games to really, like, work um, we're gonna have original on something modern. Included, but we're also gonna Probably have take a well, lot it of work. Is. It is, and also, from what I understand, a lot of companies either don't exist from that period of time, or they were just very bad about backing up their data, like the master codes mm -hmm. and stuff are just not there. Yeah. For the consumer. So it's going to be an XBLA exclusive coming out uh, later this um, this summer. And one of the really key features that we're going to have is two-player co-op. Honestly, it's too bad it's Xbox Live exclusive because it looks really cool. I mean, there might be a physical out there somewhere. What's it called? Guardian Heroes? Let me see. Yeah. Uh, after every so many levels, the path that you're going to take. So maybe you decide to run into the forest or pursue Guardian the wizard or the villagers, and that choice will open a brand new level. Now, this is the original, I'm guessing. Yeah. 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 This will have arcade so version. You can replay Guardian Heroes multiple times and take completely different paths, experience different levels altogether. Even with like two or three playthroughs, you can't see it all. It is that much. Content. I don't know if it had a physical release so or not. Let me see. I'm happy to be working with Treasure again, but incredibly proud to offer this game back to the Sega fan. Cool. And uh, you mentioned XBLA exclusive. XBLA exclusive. And it's coming out this summer. Uh, it's going to be coming out later this summer. Absolutely. All right. And price point? You guys talking price point? Yet? We're not really talking about the price point, but definitely in tune with what, you know, we we do when we come out with these HDs. I know. Apparently, you can still buy it from Xbox.com. So. so it's not dead, okay. at least. All right. So uh, that's it from the Sega. Well, not yet. Let's if it gets taken off the Xbox 360 storm and that closes next month, then maybe. <laughs> I was going to say, if I can see, this is what the... This is what the GameSpot camera guys do. They're like, yo, we're yeah. done. Zoom out. Or zoom That's in. so funny. <laughs> there you go. The Wii U booth tour. One that I'm uh, really curious about, to be honest. Yeah, me too. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was something to zoom in from. <laughs> hey, Link's having a good time. <laughs> See, when we were looking at the show floor tour, I saw those giant birds like halfway across the room, but I didn't know what they were. <laughs> Uh, underneath us. That's really uh, funny. Oh. Getting their hands on the Wii U. Uh, we also got some Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I do uh, find it funny. Like, if you look at the other booths that we've seen, it's just like, okay, most of the games have, like, maybe two or three demo units, and then you have Nintendo, where it's just like they got all of these units. Yeah, right. Our hands on with the like obviously they're not all Zelda, but it does look like they have quite a few specifically for Zelda. Yeah, I could see this being a pretty popular booth. Yeah. Ghost Recon game over there. We got some tech demos. We got some Mario, and a whole slew. I saw the bird tech demo again. Yeah. Like man, look how cool we can make things look. When we're focusing everything on graphics. That's why I hate yeah. tech demos like that. Like, it's literally like, okay, we're putting all of our resources into this to make sure it looks really good. But no game is ever going to look like that. Well, it's kind of even the same thing with, like, 3D CGI videos, like, back in the PS1 generation. It's like, yeah, they look really good. But you're never going to get a game that looks like that on that hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Homer's going for it. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Just the way you said that was so funny. <laughs> you're, you're not holding the mic close enough. We can't hear. It's okay, it looks like someone in the back turned turned the mic up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. You know, if you really think about it, I guess this is also kind of, in a way, proto VR, depending on how they want to like utilize it. That's true. When the arrows approach, do that. Exactly. I do find it funny how this is just a game based around like just using it as a shield. Like you put a shield up. It's like cool. 
I was gonna say, what kind of pirate just uses a shield like that? Like, where's your sword, man? Like, it does seem really weird that this is pirate themed when it's all about using a shield. Yeah, like all they really needed to do was uh, make it like medieval themed or something. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta actually get good. <laughs> come on, hey, on, come on. <laughs> also, I like how this is Nintendo and they don't have like actual arrows, they have plungers on the end of them. Yeah, right. Very fitting. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You wouldn't be able to shake them down otherwise, but you know. Honestly, like, I don't know if they did it in Color Splash, but I could see them using stuff like this in Paper Mario. So, it doesn't look like this was an actual game? No, it just looks like it's a demo of the gyro. Yeah, I guess it's just more of an E3 thing just to show off, like, what you can do? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Like, at least I can't seem to find anything else on it besides just previews. So I guess some people thought it was supposed to be a game. Maybe it was supposed to be. I don't know. Like, it, like I think you're right. With hindsight, it does seem like it's just meant to be, you know. Yeah. It's meant to be, like, just a tech demo. Well, yeah, I just don't think there's really enough here to really make a game, at least based on this alone, right? Oh. Yeah. He hit like a filter or something. <laughs> Did he? Hold on. I don't know. The color changed on me. On on what? On the like on the video? On the. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was just Discord having issues for a second. It turned green for like a second, then turned back. Huh. There you go. Yeah, I'm feeling it now. Weird. Okay, well, don't mind me. <laughs> oh, oh, like that. Oh, yeah, you're right. It did. Yeah. Okay, it's not just me. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, like that, right? What the fuck? Yeah. That's weird. Why'd that happen? That's strange. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I don't know. I guess I just didn't I'm... notice it the first time it happened. All right, so you're out of practice. I mean, it was very brief, yeah. All right, here we go. I mostly noticed it because I was watching the screen, and then I saw the water change color. I was like, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Over. Also, just uh, unrelated to what they're doing, I do find it funny how they have the power cord plugged into the gamepad because it charges on the bottom, not on the back. <laughs> oh yeah, that's kind of funny. So it's it's at least a slightly different model to like the actual gamepad. Okay, interesting. Maybe it's more of like a prototype. I mean, probably, or they had some kind of like battery pack. Maybe they changed where the charge port is. I'm not too sure. So I want to pause it here, by the way, just because I want to say, look how sweaty my man's is Yeah. Here. He's a sweaty boy. I guess that you would get, because it probably is really hot in there. You have all those people, like, around. Oh, yeah. You know? All the people, all the lights. Like, it, it would be hot in there. Oh, my gosh. And, like, I'm sure there's AC, but it's, it's still in California. Oh, yeah. It's okay, I'm very good at it. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> hey, we called that out. So we're going to keep moving on here. Oh my gosh, I just completely humiliated myself. We got other games that are up over here. I'm surprised he spent as much time as he did on that. Japanese Garden Tech Demo. And let's see what's going on over here. What is this all about? Can you tell us about this demo? 
I'm not allowed to. You're not allowed to? Okay, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So she's she's a booth babe. She doesn't know the specifics. How, Seems so. Good. How about you? I'm doing well. How, so what's your impression of this thing so far? Very light, but it doesn't have batteries. No battery. So when it well when it has batteries, we'll see how light it is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they have it plugged in the back, so there's because there's no battery in it. Okay. There you go. Visual tech demo, I believe. I guess that makes sense. That's pretty sweet. High definition. Man, I'm sweating. <laughs> that, that shield pose thing got me working here. So uh, we're going to keep vlogging. Shield pose. What else we got here? We got some uh, chase me. Let's see what people are doing here. Oh. Now, I do uh, know of like chase me. Because I think this one was added to me adventure or something. And, uh, it was like one of those huh. mini game packages. Got the Wii U over there. Let's see what, oh, okay. what he's doing. Looks like. It's just like a bunch of me's kind of running after each other. And uh, <laughs> everyone's sweating cool. here, man. Apparently. So, uh, let's keep moving on here. We're gonna just take quick looks at everything here because I know that uh, our stage demo probably gave people a good idea of what this console is all about. Looks like we got battle me over Damn, here. Damn, Homer, you are sweating, my dude. Uh, PVP battle uh, huh. type of type of demo. Let's take a look here. Thanks for playing. Thanks for let's playing. Looks like Battle me. Demo. Clever titles. Battle me. Looks like this dude's all talking about it. Again, it looks like we got the full Wii mote and nunchuck going on. Can you give us a, like a quick rundown of what Battle Me is all about? Um, Battle Me is an experience basically designed to illustrate how in one game experience you can have players using the Wii remote controllers um, and the new controller to have different experiences in the same game world. Okay, cool. So in this, we've got one person controlling a spaceship with the new controller, and then two other players fighting him on the ground using the Wii remote controllers. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Hopefully we'll get a glimpse of it. Looks like they got their uh, their Samus suits on, huh? Yep. So, uh, it's kind of a Samus-themed, <laughs> Metroid-themed experience. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Gotcha, that's gotcha. obviously a look at the, the console there. But uh, we'll, we'll move on here. That's Battle Me. Um, the experience with using the Wii controllers and the Wii U controller. Looks like we got the new Super Bar Mario Brothers me over here. I'm wondering how this is going to work with the Wii U controller. I um, don't know if we can get a sneak peek in there, but... Yeah, maybe we'll come back. Not to trying to take a little peek. I like how Cameron seems like he's trying to be sneaky. So, um... It's like journalism yeah. trying to sneak a peek while another journalist is doing their thing. That's all about, but, uh, yeah. Let's see. Hello. Good. How are you doing? What is, what's this all about? This is the HD experience. Okay. Um, not so okay. Oh, you're not talking. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's see. <laughs> <All right>. so, <laughs> um, <laughs> what do I do here? Oh, we can't cheat that. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, that mm. is the HD experience. Let's take a look. There's Link. <laughs> okay. <Cruising> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, but sure. Oh, I see. So they're like, so you control that. So you're seeing different angles. I do like it. She's like, you're not allowed to shoot that. And the, the camera guy's just sneaking a peek at it. Like, anyway. I mean, she's holding it up for him, I guess, but maybe he wasn't supposed to touch it, I guess. Probably. So let's move on a little bit. We're, uh, we're running a little longer, uh, so let's just briefly take a look. Bit of an awkward encounter, but I guess that'll happen. Basically, oh, it looks like it's all the same. Yeah, stuff. that'll happen sometimes. Shield pose that I failed miserably at and battle me. All right, so that's a look at the Wii U controller uh, here at the Nintendo booth, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's go back to the show. Oh, wait. Okay, a zoom in. Not, not as drastic of a zoom in, but still a zoom in. Uh, okay, just a few more of these to go. Rage Bethesda Booth Tour. Hopefully, we'll get to see a Skyrim Dragon. Yeah, that'd be cool. Hey, guys. Julie K here. E3 2011. We're here at the Bethesda Booth. Rage was bad, right? Rage. I think the first Rage was considered okay. We're here at the Bethesda it's not super great, but... Cooper, design director from id Software. So, Matt... Can you tell us what you guys are showing here for Rage here at E3? Yeah, so at this year's E3, we're doing something a little different. We haven't done this before. We have playable on the floor on the PS3 and the 360. We, what we did, you know, Rage offers so much diversity. We took seven different pieces of the game, and we're offering it up for people to play here at E3. Huh. Wow. Um, 
so I know you guys are launching the title this year, and we've seen the evolution throughout the many years. So what even is your... I know it's like an <laughs> FPS game, right? But like, what's the, the deal with it? What's the story? I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about it because I haven't played it. I've been with the project right from inception after we finished Doom 3. Uh, John started working on technology. And it's kind of a marriage of both technology, a brand new fiction. You know, people that know it's software, know Doom and Quake and those games. But we wanted to do something different, which means not just do the same game with a different skin on it. We wanted to do something truly unique and different. And to be honest, at first, we didn't really know what that was. We just started experimenting. We're gamers just like, you know, you guys are and the people out there. And uh, we started infusing all of these different elements. So we started with, okay, we want to mm, okay. be bigger, a little more open. But we don't want to stray too far from our shooter roots. So we kept kind of reeling it in. But we do have this big, believable world. But you're still focused and directed like you would expect from an id shooter. But now you're... You know, you're running across a wasteland in a vehicle with rockets uh, strapped to it. You haven't done that in a game before. You're using different ammo types for the weapons. So you have some things uh, like you're familiar with, a shotgun, uh, but now you have a different ammo type for it. You also have these engineering. You can craft these elements like a, everything from a sentry bot to a turret to this crazy wing stick that goes out and hmm. decapitates mutants and then comes back to you. So it's really See, like, this seems interesting. And kind of just really exploiting diversity. Yeah, no, I've heard good things about the game. I do, well, like I say with everything, I do eventually want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Too relatable. And so for me as a designer and a game player, yeah. I always you know, kind of explain it this way. The two things that matter the most are how good does it look and how fast does it play. It, it's allowed us to, to render these truly unique environments. We can uniquely texture all of the static geometry in a scene. So you don't have this repetitive texture. And it gave us this excuse, you know, and, and again, we didn't we didn't start out with this, but... What, what we saw was, hey, we have the ability to uniquely texture. Let's push that as far as we, you know, as far as we can. So the artists were kind of freed up to make these really distinct looking environments. But then all of it, for a shooter, this is important, all of it running at 60 frames a second on the console. Because that fundamental feedback for a shooter was important to us. I mean, that's true. I guess 60 FPS, how common was 60 FPS in video games at this point? Were games like really aiming for that? I don't quite remember. I think there were some games that were aiming for that, but this is kind of the point where, like, the more higher fidelity games started settling for 30, right? Yeah. It became more prevalent during, like, the, the 8th gen, but it kind of started here near the end of the PS3 generation. You know, how we play as one person through the game, it made sense to me. I want to play that with my buddy, right? So we came up with these co-op missions. You can play with your buddy on the couch, split screen, or you can play with somebody, you know, anywhere in the world. So we have those kind of uh, crafted co-op missions that are, are parallel with the... Uh, no sound for this bit. Story. Then we're also Apparently not. Looking for some additive experience. We didn't want to just have a checkbox of what multiplayer to, to throw in the box. So what we saw were the vehicles. That gives us a chance to do something different. We tried it. We put vehicles in. We put the networking in. Uh, you know, we were, we're weapons, different classes of vehicles, armor types. We really liked it as game players. So now we're giving that to the public. So... We really wanted to look at it as what can we add to this big single player game to make a difference and we, we kind of settled on these cool vehicle uh, multiplayer online modes and co-op that's awesome um and then can you tell us about the launch date and platforms for this game so we'll be releasing on october 4th on the ps3 the xbox 360 and the pc great well thank you mm -hmm. for your time mm -hmm. all right have a great show Okay, that's it for that one. So more so about the rage, not so much Bethesda booth, unfortunately. Yeah. But I wanted to see the dragons. All right, the Koi Tecmo booth. So what would Koi Tecmo be doing at around this time? Uh, Dynasty Warriors Eight, Tecmo I think. I am Maybe. Can you tell me what we, what we were so I remember seeing that during the Sony presentation for Vito. Ninja Gaiden 3. As well as Champion Jockey. And we have other um, MMORPG games. Okay, Champion Jockey is one I don't quite recall. Do you guys? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't say I've heard of it either. Graphics are really good and the fight sequences are good too. And Champion Jockey is a huge hit out in the UK, but we're trying to get the, the vibe up for the US market. Well, thank you so much. We're going to go check it out. So I can't tell if those are just booth babes, but I feel like they also got put on the spot by being asked, yo, what, what, do you like these games? Ninja 
Yeah. I do like that they just kind of repeated, oh yeah, Ninja Gaiden and uh, Champion Jockey 3. Yeah. We have lots of <laughs> right. people yeah. lining up, trying to figure out. It's like, man, GameSpot, leave the booth babes alone, man. They might not know much about these games. And then, pretty much They're here to get paid. Areas, to be fair, some of them probably do. It's not likely but. that you won't get a chance to play the game. We're still in the I mean, era of might. like niche genres, right? Like video games still being kind of niche -y. Well, they are niche, but like they're there to be at the booth, but they might not be able to say specific things about the game, right? Like it, yeah. they might be very, very technical on what the company wants people to hear about the game. Yeah, true. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors Gundam. Very nice. Oh, that's cool. Monster, my Monster Rancher. Which one is my? Oh, there's Jollywood again. Huh. I think it's Jollywood. Which one was my Monster Rancher? Was that like a thing that know. actually existed? My monster. No, not my minister. My monster. <laughs> my minister. Rancher. Yeah, it's a very different game. Video game. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, it may have come out. My monster rancher. Okay, so what's this? Uh, I'm an adult. Thank you. Uh, fan <laughs> dumb wiki for asking me that. Uh, uh, did you? Known as one million person monster farm in Japan. Typical. Uh, uh, person Monster Rancher series was released on mobile platforms outside Japan. So it's a mobile game, I guess. Oh, okay. I thought it might be for with the name My Monster Rancher, but I wasn't too sure. Oh boy, many features require the player to pay cash. So just buying some items and resting. The monster can rest if you wait a couple of minutes while not doing anything. Boo! Yeah, that sounds kind of lame. So these are all like mobile games, I guess. And another game, an adventure in Arlen. Hmm. And I think nobody is interested in Atelier. Oh no! <laughs> That's sad, dude. I heard Tatori was actually a good one. She mentioned Champion. I don't know much about it specifically, but when I was looking up like, oh, which game to start on, people did recommend that one along with like Iris and I think it's Verona. Hmm. Okay. Or Ryza, if you want to get like the the new modern ones. I saw the Dark Souls booth. Yeah. Blam. Not as many people as I thought there'd be there. I mean, it was still niche. If we can find ourselves some champion jockey. Yeah, I need to try the uh, uh, Atelier games. I saw recently, and I really... Can we talk to you about... Uh, that's a Connect games? game, I see. So, what is your... Yeah, well, if you ever want to play them, I do have a large majority of them. The oh, really? So. Okay, well, I'll need to steal them from you. Yeah, because I bought quite a few of them over the years, and then, like, I've been getting reprints that Video Game Plus has been putting out. And also the Get Up Racer features for the Tecmo side of the game. And two games, you know, get into the one, come together. So this is a champion jockey, is a new, a completely new game. But uh, this is, uh, I mean, this game is for the Wii and also the, the Sony Precious Station 3. Can we check it out real quick? So this Night. is a I'm curious. Racket. Thank you for playing. Excellent. You're welcome for playing. Okay, let's see. Initialize and connect. Yes, um, the Xbox 360, so this is a Kinect. So the motion sensor. And you, you can use a controller right now? I mean, you, you, don't, need a co you don't need a controller to do it. Oh, okay. All you need is your body. So this is a... Uh, but it looks like you can use a controller. Sensor, so. If I had to guess. Maybe? I don't know, maybe not. Well, she said it, he, well, he said it was coming out on PS3 and the Wii. I mean, maybe, maybe this is a motion controller based game. I mean, maybe. I guess if it comes out of PS3 and Wii, it probably uses their motion controls, too. Do like this to go forward. And also, you can jump it. And you can use, you can whip it. Yeah, it's so many things you can. This is a fun game. Have you demo her? I could demo it, if that helps. I mean, yeah, you can demo it. So, you have to... So, I kind of feel bad for this guy, because I almost feel like... 
I almost feel like his English might not be like super great to yeah. be doing something like E3 where people are going to bombard you with like a bunch of questions. So I kind of feel like maybe they could have picked someone else who'd have a bit of an easier time, right? Probably. Would you play this game, Megan? No. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really too impressed so far. Oh, oh yeah, I beat him up. That's my kind of jockey game right there. Is it like even doing anything? <laughs> I have no idea. Cause like, I'm just watching and like, oh, okay, it's moving now. I'm like, is it even reacting to anything <laughs> she's doing? It doesn't look like it, not really. I mean, she's trying. Mm. She's doing a lot of different things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Drive. Maybe, maybe not the best showing. Now's your chance. Crack the whip. I think this is like the first time we've seen a Kinect game that doesn't seem to really work that well. Mm. Yeah, this one seems very... Mm, not funny. the greatest. Hi, Belle. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you can tell us real quick about the... Oh, that's okay. We'll go ahead and... Um, so thank you so much uh, for letting us check this out. Um, back to you guys at the stage. Now, I don't know if she did that because she's running out of time or she just didn't really want to talk about the jockey game anymore. But she seemed very eager just to be like, oh, no, no, that's okay. It's fine. I mean, probably both. All right, so Disney booth hey, tour. Homer back here in the South Hall, and it is I don't know what Disney had at this point. At the Disney Interactive booth right yeah, I'm not too sure. And, uh, this is probably one of the more interesting laid out booths. It's kind of open. It's got this little walkway. I'm up standing in the middle of this walkway right here. But right uh, in this area, it looks like they got a Universe yourself and your friends. Pir Pirates of the Caribbean, hmm. the video game. Ah, uh, Lego Pirates uh, of the Caribbean. Very nice. Lego fans. I forgot Pirates they had a Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean Lego. Can get excited about this title. Looks like a lot of fun. Um, more from, you know, you can expect more of the same type of gameplay uh, as the rest of the Lego franchises, but this one seems to have a little bit more. Is that like Proto Twitter? Twitter? I think it's like Proto, like, uh, like really young Twitter if we move down there. Way, yeah, we got some, looks uh, like it. We got Phineas and Ferb. Uh, yeah. Phineas and Ferb. Good job, Homer. You, you really, you really just uh, showed you don't know. Well, fun. That film when he's never seen Phineas and Ferb. All right. So yeah. Here we also got Crazy. Two, the video game. <laughs> uh, this one looks like I've seen know. some. I've seen some. Just not a lot. Okay. I, mean, I know it's good. I've seen some too. Um, that dude was doing some twists in there. That was pretty sweet. All right. So that's Cars 2. And uh, let's see. We got really weird looking Cars game. Right by you here. Yeah. And we got some uh, universe yourself and your friends. What was that oh. email? I saw an email. Some, uh, uh, universe. I up it. Am I young? I'm not Lep sure. Up it, Amy Young. What? Yourself At Gmail. Right. Not too sure what that game I wonder if that's where the camera went off like really quickly. He's just like, oh, it's an email. It's probably hopefully a business email. Oh, hopefully. I mean, hopefully. In some of the Disney universe. Look at that. There you go. Look at that. Let's, let's see. <laughs> not really. Let's see not really good for. I guess she's a little too close, oh, maybe. That. Oh no, she's fine actually. Yeah. So go. not much of a game, Aladdin, from what I can Aladdin. see. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Uh, looks like we got some more of the Disney universe right here. Okay. Um, more cars too. So let's let's make our way off of this platform here and go down to the to the area that also has more games for Disney Interactive. Let's check this out. Excuse me, guys. All right. So if we move down this way, we got like a giant Cars 2 display over here. Little uh, lightning. Okay, that's a nice Cars bed. Okay, that's kind of funny. Plan Cars 2. For the PS3 right there. We got we got the Wii version over there. See, I was going to ask Megan if she would want like a car's bed, but I know the answer would be no. The Lightning McQueen bed. No, but that's pretty so, funny. 
Let's make our way around. It's a classic them making a race car bed. Cars two situation. I like how it's literally just a generic race car bed with the Lightning McQueen <laughs> thing on it. Like it doesn't even yeah. pretend to have the eyes. Yeah, I know, right? She looks comfortable. She's about to pass out. Looks it's like, like I know a bet like a bed like that would go for. I'm not too sure how much to be honest, but uh, you make it cars. Suddenly it's a thousand dollars. You know, thousand dollar bed. Oh, probably. Yeah. Vegetation here. It's probably at least double what it would cost for a regular one. <laughs> oh, definitely. Burdens of time. It's um, it's a hidden object game for Facebook, so you play it with. Oh yay! Friends. Um, you basically play a. Man, imagine. Detective moving throughout all. Imagine the like there. having a booth and going like, yeah, we're showing Facebook games at this booth. Oh boy. A little bit of a city building aspect you're gonna build up your garden which we can take a look at uh in order to progress throughout the game but it's i think i've seen ads on tv for a game similar to this i don't know if it's the same <laughs> one that's kind of funny so oh hibiscus when it's the first scene that you're looking at but, uh, it's see you know what the, i do actually appreciate little warriors waldo kind of games like this they're really yeah. satisfying you know yeah, like, like I, I never played a lot of hidden object games, but I do remember back in school, I really did like the I Spy books, which are basically the same thing. Yeah. Oh. Was that Farmville he just passed? That? Yeah. I don't know. Is that Farmville? Oh, I might be Gardens yeah. of Time. Oh, okay, I okay. I was going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's passed yeah, like the most influential Airbnb Facebook here. game. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Disney Universe. Looks like we got some connect action here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Disneyland. I do like found his spot. He found his good shot for like his nice. journalist website. So, yeah, I think that about does it for the Disney interactive booth here. And uh, I'm just going to keep romping around the show floor, see what we can see here at the South Hall. Until then, let's get back to the show. Zoom. <laughs> nice. now, now keep it to the end just just for sure and next up boot tour number two hey folks home robot ah, back here good spot to start it right behind me we got dance central 2 a uh, game that they're showing off big time here at the microsoft booth uh earlier they were doing some straight breaking but i don't know if that was part of the game hope not because uh otherwise i'm not gonna be playing it but uh yeah wildly popular dancing game for the connect this is the follow-up, and uh, we got some crazy visuals up there. Look at that dude's all cubed out. <laughs> that dude's all cubed like out. Kind of like a freestyle yeah. thing that they're doing right here. <laughs> That's kind of neat. More songs, more moves. That is cool. That. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> and gift form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's you know, really good. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, right I wouldn't here, be surprised if people use that literally just to make their own gifts. I could believe it. Which uh, will also be on our stage show. Later this week, we got Sonic Generations, also another stage show uh, item that we got. I, I see Rayman. They, they, they're doing that today. Rayman we Origins. Got, we got Rayman Origins. Yeah, Maybe Rayman one day he'll come back. Really fun. One of the games that everybody's pretty excited about is Connect Star Wars. Cause who oh, yeah, people are excited for that one, huh? Use the force with your hands I mean, it is a Star Wars game. And whatnot, so. It's like, yo, I'm so, so excited to be a Jedi. It's time to dance to with Han not. Solo. Hopefully we can see some Let's dance and then block song. the PNGs. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that was the end of the demo. See, now that you uh, pointed it out, it, it's like ruined it for me. <laughs> Anytime I look at this game, I'm just going to think about that. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what they are, right? If we make our way I know, but PNGs. it wasn't really that apparent until you paused it and I'm like... Yeah, awesome. it's it's not even like a gradient. It's literally <laughs> just a PNG. It's just a PNG a that they shrink and expand. We got the uh, general edition yeah. sign and fast pass. But uh looks like this is actually like the entrance to a lot of the behind closed door stuff. We got Fable the Journey, we got Gears of War 3 in the theater. But, Man, uh, you know what? Not Imagine Fable the Journey so being like closed door. Things. I wonder if it's cuz they knew people would think it was really dumb if they actually saw it like on the stage. One of my favorite games, or like on the floor, probably like likely, Forza yeah. Motorsport 4. Not because Brian Eckberg See, so we saw this in one of the other videos. I do remember seeing these seeds. Super sick. They announced that yeah. earlier this week too. Wireless, wireless styles. So those who played Forza Motorsport 3 with the all the tether, all the tethering with the the steering wheel, such as myself, I'm looking forward to. I would like to get like uh, a steering wheel at some point, so just for the sake of like you know. Looking pretty sharp. 
way into the simulation, that. I guess. To a this week, but, uh, yeah, yeah, like, I think it'd be fun. They're Looks just like, so uh, expensive. The they are, but I mean, I see it like this. You get one, and you're pretty set, with a fake you know? Wheel. And, uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I wonder how that kind of compares to... I wouldn't mind getting one as long as I know I can use it on PC and, like, the PS5, because having one for, like, Gran Turismo would be pretty cool. I mean, I assume you can probably get one for the PS5 that you can probably hook into a PC. Probably. I mean, probably? I just would need to do research, because otherwise I would be very reluctant to spend, like, $300 on one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do everything with Connect in there by the looks of things. So, and I would totally steal it second play American Trucks in with it. <laughs> that video? Hey, it'd be a good way to practice driving. Yeah. The new yeah. cars and all the new <laughs> Get used to the wheel, you know, I'm just saying. I mean, that's so, true. I mean, that, that's definitely one of the things I'll be asking all these guys from Turn 10 about, because, yeah, that's definitely my thing. So, all right, Justin, enjoy your experience with that. Uh, Forza for Motorsport 4, we got that. We got some Gunstringer over there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Gunstringer. Love Gunstringer. We actually picked that up not too long ago. We're moving on here. Oh, my camera, dude. All right. oh, you can actually we? see. We did, because uh, we found yeah. it physical at local game shop. This was like oh, one of those kind of like okay. puppet shoot em up games that they showed off, I believe, like last oh, year. Oh, yeah. I think I remember see this one. Coming along. Looks pretty fun. Good game. Uh, yeah. So that's Gunstringer on the Connect. We got the Darkness 2. Right behind us, right here, some Dead Island, some Ninja Gaiden 3, which is also uh, Dead Island. on our stage. Nice. Show. Man, there's, they got a, such a slew of stuff. Oh, we can't film that. Can't film that. Shut it down. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's move on this way. For real, if anybody does hasn't seen the like the oh, Dead Island announce or like yeah announcement trailer, look at it, and then like realize why I'm disappointed that we didn't get that. We always right. Managed to yeah. Show up whenever the the demo's done. So. Hmm. Maybe this one's got it. Oh, look, look, look. This dude, this, look, this dude looks like he's using the force. Oh, no. He's using his lightsabers. Look at that. So, obviously, um, you know, you're waving your arms. That, uh, that directs the saber. Looks like this guy's having some trouble, though, blocking that beam of fire coming at him. Why block when oh, you can just zoom straight through? All right. So, that looks pretty cool. We got some stormtroopers over here. We got... Some Sith warriors. Yeah, I definitely look cool. Um, yeah. Check I see out. Boba Fett. Take a, take a picture with some stormtroopers <laughs> if, you, if you got time. And right over here, to, to, to my left, we got none other than Gears of War 3. Because, you know, who doesn't want to get their gears on at the show? They got a big old line. Uh, yeah, I could say that here, being right? pretty popular. The multiplayer for the game. But, yeah, that's pretty much the lowdown from the Microsoft booth and we're going to end it right here in front of Marcus and the gang there he is wow no that's not Marcus let's let's go over here <laughs> to, the, to the statue of Marcus and then we'll close it out I like that they just so, really uh, want to go to Marcus to like finish yeah, this here's War 3 most anticipated game of E3 2011 one of the nominees but uh yeah Microsoft they got a huge booth over here more from that's a cool statue E3 2011. that is Zoom in. Oh, yeah. Okay, now he did, he did the shake. All right. <laughs> Dude, being a camera guy for some of the stuff must be interesting. All right, so we got only two more. Two more, and then we are done. Uh, so Sony booth tour number two. Wait, number two. Did we get number one? Um, uh, I don't remember. Was there a number one to this? Hold on. I didn't see it. Do we do THQ? We did two. Do we do THQ? <laughs> did I skip? Uh, we did do THQ. Apparently. Yeah, we did. Okay, I was making sure I didn't skip over it by accident. There's a lot of a lot of things here. Um. Yeah, I'm not seeing. I don't know. Maybe that one was taken down for some reason. Maybe they saw something they weren't supposed to. They're like, okay, shut it down. Shut it down. In the West Hall this time, back in the Sony booth, and I know we did a lot of segments from this booth, but now I'm on the actual uh, ground floor level where all the, all the uh, common folk get to mingle. Up there is like kind of like the media shishi area. But this is where uh, 
People like you and me can come and play these games. Right behind me, right here, we got Uncharted. Drake's. That's a lot of TVs. Ah, oh, for Uncharted. Like that makes sense. Showing the multiplayer uh, off. Sorts of folks here. It looks like it's. Uh, let me count this. So what is that? Six. We got twelve people playing all at once in the uh, online multiplayer mode of the game. I'm not too sure which mode they're they're playing, but uh, lots of folks seem to be enjoying it. Look at that giant line. There's all sorts of folks here waiting to play some Uncharted. Yeah, you can really tell that Uncharted was like... Oh, see, uh, is that the Skyrim Dragon? Right here, we've got the mm, I'm not too sure. Player. I can't really tell from that uh, angle. That was a Dragon some folks at the very least. Some 3D glasses. Well, Obviously yeah. Obviously going to have some 3D support being Sony and whatnot. we got Resistance 3. Um, this one looks like, yeah, supporting the same amount of folks. 12, 12 player, multiplayer. That guy seems like he's trying to figure out the 3D... Um, stuff. <laughs> might be in a death match or something. Oh, that dude. That dude's gonna get capped. Oh! <laughs> serviced. All right. Oh. Now, if we go around this way, uh, we're gonna just mainly focus on these, this side of the booth, because there's so much here. Right now, uh, we're gonna look at these PlayStation Home Nice, you got a war. Uh, we got Pixel Junk Side Scroller right here. We got Little Big Planet 2. We got this really cool looking game. I, I definitely want to go more in depth with this one later, but it's called Machinarium, I guess. And uh, the art style just looks really, really cool. And um, that one, I've yeah. seen that one. So hand drawn. That's Mac Machinarium. Style. Looks like he plays a little robot. Huh. And uh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a it's pretty like cool little puzzle little game. You would probably like we'll, it a lot. We'll a, a closer look at that game a little bit later. Sorry. Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, give us the quick rundown on what this title's all about. So you're a, uh, a robot, and there's an evil robot faction that captured you and your girlfriend. You escaped, ah, and now okay. you're going to try and save your girlfriend. I, I, yeah. A series of puzzles. Very basic cool. story, but sure, <laughs> why not? Puzzle based. Okay. Puzzle based, point and click. Um, very easy. It's a lot of just exploration of different items, combining things. Putting them together, yeah, and it's exclusive to the PlayStation. So, oh, awesome! And it has move support as well. Oh, awesome! So, is this uh, this is obviously going to be a PSN title? Yes. And uh, all PSN titles, all exclusives. Very cool. And when is uh, when is this game going to be available? Probably fall 2011. Yeah, early fall, hopefully. Awesome. Well, thanks for giving us the quick rundown. All and, right, very uh, cool. Some other PSN titles we got here is Okabu. Uh, we got Okabu looks interesting. Floria. Oh, this yeah, Okabu looks cute. Game looks pretty sweet too. Look at that. Riding a cloud. Euphoria is a game I've always kind of wanted to play, but never got around to. Items, carrots and whatnot. Beets. Tomatoes. <laughs> you got the pearl medal. All right, that looks cool. Over here, we got some Euphoria. What can you tell us about Euphoria? I can tell you anything you want about Euphoria. Uh, yeah, give us the quick rundown. What, what you, what's the, Confident. What I like it. Game? It's a strategy game. It's based around the idea of uh, terraforming. Um, so... You have these life forms which have been sent looks like Okabu got uh looks like it was pretty mixed uh, but because it looks oh, cute okay. i'm gonna throw it on our retro games to get list so they plant nice cheese. okay may as well right it's more of their own kind it does look really cute to, as a currency or as a, an offensive unit to Okabu. take over the rest of the asteroids in the asteroid belt oh wow all right so you're you're, you're basically trying to take over the galaxy yeah that's right man yeah. okay cool so when is with the flowers uh we're looking at uh august at the moment yeah okay Yes. Any any word on price point or anything like that? Uh, well, uh, no, that's not fixed yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll <laughs> All right. Floria in August. Thanks for joining us real fast. Papa and yo. Uh, Papa and yo, we're going to actually do a, a little more in-depth on that later, but <laughs> just so folks get a taste, this is what Papa and I don't yo remember. Like. I know that one came out. And, uh, did it, did it get delayed ever? To, uh, I don't know. I don't remember because I do remember Papa and, and yo seemed like a really interesting food. idea. Uh, and I always wanted to play it, but once again, right as with most things, I never got around to it. Booth replicated in, yeah. In the game, or in home, I should say. And that dude just went up the stairs without even a wristband. Look at that. I guess that's what <laughs> <laughs> he's got the My avatar over there has the VIP hookup, yeah. He doesn't need to stop for nobody, right? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, right here we're showing off a game that's coming out soon. It's called Sodium 2. I'm able to preview it. It's a futuristic racer made by one of our premier partners, Outso and Lockwood Publishing. Um, if you want what? Hmm? When's the game coming out? We don't have a launch date, but I assume it'll be in a uh -oh. couple weeks. Uh-oh. Right, uh -oh. cool. so Switchboard guy. Well, the reason why um, 
this one's in particularly uh, special oh. is because home one maybe his camera's dying. dying it's probably so been going all day brought, probably uh -oh. you know, uh -oh. you know like being in that hot room and like running all day i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if the camera would literally just overheat i could believe it um, it's really exciting cool. well we'll come uh, back and uh, we'll go more into oh my god it's breaking later. and uh we'll continue on with a look at the sony booth we got god of war origin origins collections over here and uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll stop by and talk to you a little bit more in depth we're just getting a quick look at what sony's got but uh yeah more titles over here you now that it's off that before. game though now it's perfectly yeah, it's fine course, weird maybe it's cursed awesome. mm. so, uh, yeah, I'm it must be cursed sign, so it's the only explanation we'll the booth a little bit later Zoom. Click all for one again ignored <laughs> all for one again ignored i'm kind of curious what what did you say the name of this game was i wonder if it is actually cursed future funk squad i think so Oh. I want to hear what he says. What? What? All right. Well, uh, right here we're showing off a game that's coming out soon. It's called Sodium Two. I'm able to preview. Sodium Two. I don't want to say Future Funk Squad up there, but sure. Sodium Two. Is Sodium mm -hmm. Two cursed? Let's see. Sodium Two. Game. Type game. Let me give me. Um. Well, hmm. Let's see. Uh, Sodium 2 Project Velocity was released June 16, 2011. It's European and North American versions of PlayStation Home. So it's mm. definitely gone now, but it was there, I guess. It's weird that it's a game for what is essentially a social game. It's a futuristic hmm. racer. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> that is really weird. So that's just gone now for sure, because home is gone and no one's going to be able to emulate home. Yeah, maybe they just wanted to try and add more appeal to get people on home. Oh, this is the Konami press conference. I thought I, thought I read it was uh, something else. Okay, well, we're not going to watch this, because we already said we're going to skip these ones. So, a bit of a whoopsie on my part. I guess that was the last one then. Okay. Uh, listen, pretty sure it'd be the last one, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so interesting show floor. A lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. Uh, some, see, see, like, some people, like, dressed up and doing promotional stuff while in, like, a costume. Some statues, still not as many as what you would have seen back in, like, what, what I guess would be the heyday of E3, the late 90s, early 2000s E3, you know? Yeah, it definitely seemed like there was a lot of variety of games, and like the actual show floor itself seemed pretty cool compared to a couple of the other ones we saw in the last few mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like overall, not a bad show floor. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, kind of funny. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Very, very interesting. So I'm sure GameSpot will probably have more of these. So I guess the, the era of the show floor isn't dead, but we'll still... Just check them, just see, just make sure that, you know, it's still living up to what I want to show on the show floor. Yeah. Um, and go from there. But yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty all right. All right. So once again, links to all of these, all of them, in the description. Uh, You're going to have your work cut out for you. Yeah. Like, there's a reason I keep these tabs open, just to make sure I'm good until it's done. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so I guess we're moving on to 2012 now, the year when the Earth was supposed to end. <laughs> this should be a fun E3. All right, Megan, anything else you want to say? No, I think it was good. That was pretty <laughs> fun. That was pretty fun. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. We hope you all enjoyed. But for now, it is time we cue the outro. So, Frego, and we shall catch you guys later. Bye.